I am ready. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm hmm Wonderful. Are we doing recording intro or anything? Are we going straight in? Go straight in. I've not made an intro for this one because intros are too time consuming to make and I can't yep. be bothered anymore. <laughs> and, <laughs> don't blame you, Anderson Mini Campaign. Cool. So, we had our session zero where we uh, rushed through some, some stuff. You got an impression of Lord Ernst Quivershank, his retinue, um, a little bit of an idea of what you'd be doing. You chose um, people, literally people, passengers, uh, to be ferried across the sea, the great um, keel touch strand across to the Serrated Isles, where hopefully um, you'll be able to establish a colony, the colony of New Quivershank. Um, you uh, chatted with each other, you started to get an impression of things, but it was, it was a short little session. And so we find ourselves now. Two days later, ready to go. The year is 798 post Exodus. Anya has distracted me. What is the I what's, hear it. what is the Exodus? Um <clears throat> roughly eight hundred years ago, um as is recorded in some scant few texts, um essentially people don't exactly know but they know that there were previously um, great civilizations living across um, different land masses in Archivia, um, and they left, is the understanding. People left um, Archivia. Mm -hmm. okay. There's a lot of different theories around it. Some people think um, the people left due to a great um, tragedy. Others think they left because they ascended and went to be with Cena, the Great Moon. Big part of Archivian culture. Um, there's all sorts um, of different theories, but nothing um, concrete has been known. Um, but the, the dating system uses post-Exodus. Okay. There's this great um, shifting of power and like a fresh start in Archivia, and people left behind began the nations that are there now. Or at least, so we think. For the year is 798 post-Exodus. It is the 14th of Cena's grasp. Cena, the great moon, stands huge and full in the sky above. Visible both day and night, a constant reminder of her power and sway over the lands of Archivia. This month, Cena's grasp um, has seen us so close above Verda, the great continent of plenty um, that uh, the other nations stand around in Archivia. Um, with her so close, the seas are lifted, the roiling seas have swollen once more and swallowed the majority of the bountiful continent. Um, as such, with the continent swallowed, um, the major source of, of plentiful foodstuffs um, in Archivia is um, locked away until the waters recede as the year turns over. Um, therefore, it's a lean time back on the land. People have to take stock of what they have, make sure they can last through until the waters recede and the harvest ships can set sail once more towards Verda. Um, however, for you, for all of you on your expedition, you don't need to worry too much. Lord Ernst's somewhat dwindling coffers have brought much food to be enjoyed as run through um, his wonderful cook, um, Pushkin. And um, as such, you have much food to enjoy on the lavish expedition. Um, you know that two days hence from now, with you all being, um, well, actually... I think even uh, Salia um, not necessarily being or spending much time in Hespia would be aware of this. In two days' time, all the people aboard the ship will be celebrating a Hespian festival, the Night of Holding. This is celebrated on the 1st um, of Fulsin, um, the next month, 
where people gather around and tell each other what they are grateful for. What's it called um, again, Tom? Sorry. The festival is called the Night of Holding. Night of Holding. At the beginning of each month in Hespia, there is a night of celebration, a small festival to celebrate something. And the night should of holding. Should I have a character sheet for this guy? <laughs> yeah, you should, if you want to make that. It's just as well I'm doing it now, then, isn't it? <laughs> um, where people gather around, tell each other what they're grateful for. Um, it's seen as this kind of uh, humbling um, moment of gratitude done when um, the harvest ships can no longer go to Verda and people have to make do with what they have. Um, from the very grandest organizations in Crucible to the lowly farmhands of Three Mills, Hespians will take stock of what they hold and speak words of gratitude and humility as a community. But now, though, the expedition begins. Is there anything, and you could all say no, but is there anything you think your characters would have done, gathered, uh, worked out, researched um, in the two days between our session zero and where we find ourselves now about to begin the expedition? There is something, mm. but others can go first if they have something. Anybody else? Mm. <clears throat> would there be... Would the, would the Sari bother trying to work it out before going, or would they just take the waves as they are? To work out the journey? Yeah. The Sari... <clears throat> um, <sighs> Travelling the seas is, a, is, a commun is done as a communal thing. Mm -hmm. um, amongst the Sari, it's very rare to have a solo um, uh, sailor piloting Sari ships going forth, um, particularly because the ships are often constructed from different Sari dwellings, both uh, like held together and um, and so on. So yeah. you you need multiple people to make a good Sari ship. Um, so probably it's quite a strange experience for Salia because. There's probably an itch in the back of her mind thinking we should be planning, we should be working this out as a community, but she obviously feels a bit of a disconnect from um, from the rest of the crew. And also she knows, uh, certainly by now, that the navigating and the, the judging of the expedition is pretty much being done by uh, two people. By the specular sophist mill and... Um, Porsche. Yeah. Remind me again that this is just going to be on one big boat, or is it many boats? It's one big boat. One big boat. Okay. One big boat. What, is what the... level are we meant to be? Three. Good. Thank you. What um is the name of the boat? The Quiver Sail. Boat. The Quiver Sail. Yep. You can see the the previous name has been. <laughs> overwritten and in gold uh, filigree, a new name has been carved in the quiver sail. Nice. Uh, I think Sally would just try and make her way around the boat, have a look, make sure where she knows where everything is. Absolutely. Roll an investigation check for me. Okay. We're on the boat, but we're not at sea, yeah? Um... You can be on uh, three. You can be on the boat already, or you can be like about. You can be one of the last to get on the boat. People are filing onto the boat uh, I can't currently. I thought we're going to the market. <laughs> you can go to the market. Yeah. Or your character can have gone to the market. There's just a um, few things I wrote down. Fish Kim and Vaughn. Amazing. Um, Sally, the investigation. Um, there's some things you can't possibly miss. Uh, one. This is incredibly unwieldy lumbering it's like a horrendously overweight hippopotamus just like <laughs> compared to sari ships um and sari ships can be made to carry many many people but are still kept dexterous in the water um they're built for um dexterity for speed uh, for maneuverability um, and there, it's all about respecting the sea and knowing that you need to be able to adapt because it is the sea's um, will that you need to adapt it's to. Driving the Titanic, yeah. Yeah, this is a big, and what you are... notice it's huge. It's lumbering. It looks like it's got a turning circle of a fucking hour. Um, He's a... It's 
it's a warship. It's clearly a warship. Um, there are cannons aboard. Um, you count. You start counting and lose track. There's more than like 50 cannons aboard. Um, you can see the ship is very clearly divided as you're watching people come onto it. Um, there's areas towards the back of the ship which are made for the Lord and his retinue, and presumably you guys as well. Uh, below deck, the first deck is reserved for the crew. There's a de dedicated crew of sailors and also a contingent of marines, soldiers, you note weapons and such, that seem to have their living quarters on the first uh, deck below uh, the top. The deck below that seems to be for the citizens, the people who are coming along, um, all of which have been divided up amongst you and your peers. And then below that is the cargo hold, where many animals are being kept. But also, okay. it's stacked high um, with a lot of equipment. Just the whole time, the overwhelming thing in your mind is this thing is huge. It's going to sit low in the water with how much cargo is there. Um, it is not adaptable. It very clearly, and for, Sal for Salia, I think this would be like a, a disgusting sign of arrogance. It very clearly is, isn't... Um, adaptable and listening to the sea it's just mm -hmm. fucking storming forward and telling the sea to get out of its way yeah. incredibly offensive in um, uh, Sari culture um, so yeah it would be like dislike it yeah it would be like someone who loves cars um, going and just like seeing this like horrific truck yeah m like monster truck just this cr horrible parody of what a ship should be um so yeah <laughs> nice uh pushkin your trip to the market yeah so i made a list of things he would want to both have or mm -hmm. uh <clears throat> okay okay sacks of seed brackets hespian grow all year round amazing pots and pans cauldron slash cooking equipment yep Farming tools. Yep. Exotic spices opposite <laughs> to where they're going. So from a continent the furthest away from Hespia. The furthest away from Hespia would be Sedistre. So is that to the That's the west. far west, yeah. Yeah. Um Hespian spices. Which might yep. just be salt and pepper, like in Britain. <laughs> Um, he wants a large collection of Hespian cookbooks on board. Yep, amazing. And some blank books slash writing equipment so he can come up with his own new recipes. 100%. All absolutely on board and loaded up. And uh, Pushkin would know that there is a dedicated section. Um, I believe it's on the first, um, first or second uh, deck down, um, which is the kitchen. It's nice. large, considered Pushkin's kingdom. Um, he would, I think the only thing he'd be he'd be most worried about things that grow all year round. Yeah. Because he might act like an idiot, but he knows you want to be planting stuff that grows straight away. Yeah, absolutely. He would know from a great experience um, that... Um, the farming settlement of Three Mills, which is connected closely with Crucible, um, they have um, crops that they grow underground um, to, so that they can keep growing it all year round and not worry about the ash fall um, coming down. So they have different things. They have some um, uh, fungi that cultivate really well, but they also have grains that they've uh, come up with ingenious ways of bringing light down um, but they're very hardy um, crops that absolutely grow all year round. Yeah, and seeing as it's quite close to Crucible, I imagine those recipes, if he doesn't already know them, would be in the large oh, yeah. collection of cookbooks he took. Easily, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, he's just trying to shore himself up, being like, Hey, oh, so I took all this stuff, yes. <laughs> yep. The Lord would be very pleased with you and would be bankrolling it for you. Yeah, that's why he wants the spices as well. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Awesome. Anything else from anyone else? Yes, Portia would like to talk to the Lord Quivershank and try and get him to fund 
um, her to acquire um, like extra navigational tools and things that would be useful in emergencies and stuff? 100%. He would be incredibly enthused. Um, he would send you to Permian, the Lord's Purse, who is a lot less enthused and quite tight-fisted. Go ahead and roll a persuasion check for me, or if you'd prefer a different social skill. Feel free to use those. She wants to use deception, if that's okay, because of she course. has some intention of buying some things, but she's also got some things she wants to use the money for herself. Oh, very good. Yeah, go ahead. That's an 18 deception. Very nice. I will roll a cursory roll. Yeah. His stuff isn't good anyway. Yeah, you... You weave him a tail... He gets completely wrapped up in just how important navigation equipment is. Without it, the boat is likely to sink, to run aground, to never arrive at your destination and be lost forever upon the seas. You read this man like a book. He's a very easy scare. And before long, he is sending you away with bags of gold to be used. How much in total? That was a good roll. With 500 gold. 500. Um, yep. In that case, then, if you'll allow me, mm -hmm. I'm just looking at some different poisons in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to get, if you allow me to buy, she will spend 350 gold on the actual thing she was going to. Mm hmm. Oh, wait, maybe I should do slightly higher one, actually. Yeah, um... Did we just quickly read this? Da -da -da -da. Do it. Um, she spent, sorry, 300 gold on that, and I, uh, obviously this poison might not exist in your world, but I'll put it in the chat for you. Mm -hmm. Um, to see if an equivalent poison would be possible um it's a drow poison costs 200 gold pieces typically only made by the drow or in a place far from removed from sunlight creatures subject to this poison must succeed on a dc 13 console be poisoned for one hour and if the saving throw fails by five or more the creature is also unconscious while poisoned in this way cool yeah not a problem it's like a tranquilizing mm -hmm. um and weakening poison definitely would have an equivalent in archivia yeah she would buy that for herself then and spend the other 300 gold on the actual equipment that they require. Very cool. And I will say by getting that funding out of old Permian I'm going to decrease the DC of some stuff you're going to have to do later on. Very nice. Decreased. Anything from the Burgomaster? Or does he spend his two days just walking around with Brutus? <laughs> Trying to avoid prying eyes. Well, not even that. He'd just be like promenading on the deck, just like, oh, yes, pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Very good. Any dog under his arm. Oh, yes, pleasure to meet you. I'm Burger Master Salisotl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the introducing stuff to everyone coming aboard. Yeah, and they're all like, I know. <laughs> Incredible. What? What I've just realised uh, only Tom can see is that I was miming him walking down the deck. With <laughs> it's, the a good, it's a good mime. There's a lot of swag there. He has a lot of swag, Tom. And but I make no apologies for it. Promenading. Cool. I've made a note of his promenading. Another thing I wanted to add, Tom. Yep. When Go right she ahead. was buying the poison, mm -hmm. she would have used her masquerade tattoo um, to cast disguise self on herself so she does not look like nice. herself um yeah amazing yeah and discovery is a big city you wouldn't have found it difficult to find a secluded back alley to buy this awesome don't 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 <laughs> oh, okay the burgomaster is speaking as if the scandal didn't happen makes a point of doing so okay got it very cool. So, on this bright morning, 
Sorry. Before no, we even. Oh, yeah, go ahead. He's he's effectively being like Princess Diana or Kate Middleton, going and like shaking people's hands, being like, pleasure, pleasure. Welcome <laughs> aboard. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you. Oh. Brutus, say hello. <laughs> Making it all about him. Yeah. It's Amazing. The burger master. And also, he's played by me. <laughs> Very cool. That will actually have an effect on some stuff I've got lined up. Um, so, before you even we even get to any kind of navigation, I need someone to roll a d20 for me, please. Anybody? A singular d20. Make a note so someone else do it. Three. Thank you. Cool. Noted. Okay. So, this bright morning on the 14th of Cena's Grass... <laughs> You are invited by um, Lord Ernst Quivershank to his quarters. Um, does everybody attend? <coughs> yeah, 100%. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so let's introduce you to the map. There he is. If you could direct your attention, there are multiple instances of you at the moment, um, but if you can direct your attention, you don't need to move any tokens or drag anything out. Down to the left. Bottom left area. Oh, yeah, <laughs> just there as oh well. Oh my god, sorry, I've got such bad hay fever at the yeah. moment. That's alright. You will file in to quarters slightly cramped um, for the for the number of you that are here, um, did you make this? Lord Ernst? I would love to say yes, but I absolutely did not. Yeah, it's no. fucking great. It's it? ridiculous. It's fucking huge. Um, you guys will get to explore more of it. Um, but here in the aft castle cabin, thank you, map. Actually, no, that's not the aft castle cabin. It's the quarter deck cabin. Um, you see on the table in front of you a big map, okay? The map contains Hespia um, over on the right, a large um, area of open ocean, and then a collection of uh, islands on the other side, clearly labelled the Serrated Isles. Lord Ernst, as you all kind of file in and have to kind of squeeze in shoulder to shoulder, as this is quite a um, um, uh, small area, Lord Ernst is clearly full of excitement and enthusiasm and is practically vibrating in the seat he's currently sat. To his immediate left and right is Elsie Winchurn, his bodyguard, and the Lord's Purse, Permian Balalor. And you see around you the remaining members of the rest new that you've met previously. Xython of the Deep, the Triton Associate, um, Icky Teltone, the Master of Sail, Speculus Office Mills, the Navigator, and um... You see some faces you don't uh, yet recognize. But as you've all filed in, a, a slight hush descends as Lord Ernst Quivershank raises a hand and stands to his feet. My friends. My dear, dear friends. We are about to set sail on an expedition that will change history. And oh, he pushed him. We start clapping. <laughs> He holds up a hand with a big smile and says, Thank you, thank you, yes, I too think this is worthy of a round of applause. Everybody give yourselves a round of applause. Wonderful, wonderful. And he claps around to everyone. You'd see the only... Uh, it's up to you whether your characters clap. Icky Teltone does not clap. And Elsie Winchurn claps very slowly. But Pushkin. the other NPCs are clapping. Pushkin would have, like, be looking around the room, like, just looking at everyone, like, Clapping a lot. <laughs> Portia would be clapping. Just to refresh my memory, Tom, um, mm -hmm. could you tell me who Zython and Icky were to the group? Icky is a Hadozi. In your brief meetings with him, he seemed quite surly and unimpressed with the Lord uh, Ernst Quivershank. Mm -hmm. um, he's, his role on the ship is the master of sail. Master he's in charge of, sail. of sailing. Oh, poor Hannah. Hopefully that fixes itself. Um, and then Zython, you didn't really speak with much at all. Quite an enigmatic figure. But um, Lord Ernst introduced him as a Triton and seemed very pleased that there was a Triton on the expedition. Mm. Um, Portia would well know that Tritons are 
the dominant race beneath the waves. They have a society that lives in the oceans of Arkevia. Um, they have had a big cultural shift in the past uh, 20, 30 years um, where they've been joined by um, uh, a race of much uh, fewer numbers, um, the Gith, um, who have taken up a... I think other races probably see it as quite sinister role amongst the Triton. They've taken up role as leaders, um, almost like faith leaders. Um, not too much is known. The, the contact, historically contact with the Triton is limited, mm -hmm. but amenable, amiable. Um, and some trade is done between land dwellers and sea dwellers. Um, but since the Gith have taken over, the Triton have become a lot more isolationist and protective of the waters. Um, but the Lord Ernst seems to think that having a, a Triton on board and with the expedition is a big blessing for the expedition. Okay, well, do we know what his role is in the ship? He does not have one. Okay. So... He's simply here to... It's, the Lord Ernst treats him like an ambassador or an emissary. Ambassador. It's all like, thank you so much for joining us. It is wonderful to have your people's blessing. Mm -hmm. okay, and awesome. anyone overhearing conversations or observing, we see Zython is quite haughty in his demeanor and just gives little nods and occasional broken common um, replies to people. Okay, thank you. No worries. So after the collapse diminish, he says, yes, well deserved. We're ready to go. Um... I don't believe everyone in the room is familiar. This is um, the ooh, 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 ooh. the captain of Quivershank's first battalion. This is uh, not. Oh no, sorry, got that wrong. This is Toria Mooncloud, and he gestures to a tall, orcish woman. Um, she seems very cool and calm and collected. Gives each of you a, a brief nod as she looks around the room. Tor Quite neutral expression. Torian, did you say? Toria Mooncloud. Okay, I'll make sure she's in everyone's journals. Um, she is in charge of uh, the Marines, and he gives a little, like, excited shimmy uh, under my charge. Um, hopefully violence isn't necessary, but you can never be too careful. Um, and this, in fact, is uh, Garrett Garslake. Um, but uh, am I right in thinking, sir? And the, the man speaks up and is like, Yes, uh, Notch. Call me Notch. Um, uh, see me below decks if you want to know why. And he gives a very confident smile as he looks around the room and adjusts his um, quite officious and impressive-looking armor that he's wearing. Back to the Lord, who says... Yes, uh, uh, Notch is our uh, chief gunner, our gunnery sergeant, if you will, aboard the ship, should we need to use their cannons, which would be quite an excitement. Um, but to get, of course, no violence. What was his last name? He's Garrett Garslake, but he seems to like going by Notch. Garslake. Garslake. I'll put him in. Yeah, you could spell it out for me. Sorry, I'm making like furious plays, notes. No, I love it. There's a lot to, to write down. G A R S L A K E. Thank you very much. Um, but, and he takes on quite a solemn air, the dramatic pause to business. We have an expedition to run. We will be setting out shortly. Our master of sail assures me that. Uh, the weather looks fair, and we should make good headway towards the Serrated Isles and New Quivershank. And he, get, he shoots like a big smile around the room as he says New Quivershank. Pushkin um, put his hand up. Pushkin put his hand up. Yeah. <laughs> Pushkin, please, we're all friends here. Well, in the new lands, my lord, I was just wondering how you may style yourself, if you know what I mean. Lord... Quivershank sounds not as regal as it could for a leader of a new land. Pushkin, I 
Well, I, could, I couldn't possibly. Uh, well, well, what do you think? Do you think I should be uh, Emperor Quivershank? It's got a bit of a ring to it. Maybe you could go Lord Governor and then work up from there, depending on how big our settlement becomes. I'm sure you'll be a king going on to Emperor in no time, my lord. He kind of leans back from the table, feigning sort of disbelief, but clearly looks very pleased with himself. Well, I am... Um, such lofty thoughts, Pushkin. I like your attitude. Uh, we'll, um, we'll deal with that when we get there, but, um, and he sort of leans down towards Permian and says, Can I do that? Can I change? <laughs> and Permian just looks up and starts muttering, Yes, we'll have to... He comes back to himself, Ahem! Well, uh, we have to take this seriously, though. Serious faces on, people. Um... We've got uh, a responsibility to the citizens of New Quivershank, big smile again, uh, to make sure that they have the, the most delightful, enjoyable, adventurous, incredible expedition possible. Um, as such, uh, I believe you know your roles, but we'll go around the room quickly. Lord Quivershank, of course, I will be the overall leader of this wonderful expedition. Uh, this is the Lord's Purse. Permian and Balalor, say hello, Permi. And Permian gives a, a sour smile around the room. He's in charge of coin, so if you need anything, uh, you speak to him. I think some of you already have, which is wonderful. Make use of him while he's there. While you're still around, eh, Permi? Gives him a little nudge. Uh, this is Zython of the Deep. Have I said that correctly? Zython just gives him a little nod. Uh, he is a triton. From beneath the waves. And uh, we're just so happy to have you here. So it's really just a, a treasure. Um, uh, he speaks for himself, of course. Uh, wonderful Pushkin, delightful Pushkin will be providing us with uh, the food that we need. Um, I hope it's all right, Pushkin. I've, I've. Oh. Wonderful. Make use of that, everyone. I can tell you it will and be worth for you, your while. my lord, of course. <laughs> I won't need to make requests, Pushkin. You know me too well already. I'm sure every meal will be perfect and on point. Um, but I hope it's not too much trouble. I wouldn't want to overfill your plate. <laughs> but um, I've I've taken the trouble of giving someone of your fine intellect uh, a little bit more responsibility. Um, not just uh, cooking, but just in charge of our supplies. Does that sound all right? My lord, it is my great honour. And he, oh. like, he stands up and bows in front of everyone. <laughs> lord Quivershank does a, an illustrious bow back to you as well. You can always rely on Pushkin. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, so... Uh, you can speak to Elsie afterwards about the little nitty-gritty details, but wonderful. I'm so glad to hear it. Um, uh, Sarlena? Sa, sa, is it Sarlena? <laughs> it's Sarlia. Oh, Call my me apologies. Sarlia. Um, I wondered, what with your um, uh, colourful background, um, if you wouldn't mind doing a little bit of a training, uh, you know, education. Um, we all know, and he looks around the room, the legends of the Sari people. And he kind of like nods and there's a little bit of, oh yes, ooh, around the room. Mm -hmm. um, even just uh, a little glimmer of that wisdom of the waves would um, be very welcome here. Um, again, Elsie's got the nitty gritty. I'm more of a big picture mind, um, but that would be wonderful if you if you wouldn't mind. Sounds gribble. There's only so much teaching I can do on the job, though. I'll have you know. Well, of course, no, no, no. I, I'm sure you have your own uh, things to, to take care of. Any of your time we can trouble you for would be greatly appreciated. Um, this is uh, Icky uh, Teltone, Master of Sail, Hadozi. Incredible. The Specular Sophist Mills, our prime navigator, will be in charge of getting us 
to the island, across the seas, up, down, forwards, backwards, all of that, Speculus Office. And she kind of gives like a nervous smile and looks around to everyone. She says, yep, I'll do my best. Ooh. <laughs> and she looks across at Porsche, who I realized I missed out. <laughs> Which is perfectly in character for Lord Ernst. Oh, of course! Sorry, sorry. Didn't quite see you. Little shorter. Um, Porsche Light Hollow. Uh, apt navigate tricks. Um, and uh, we'll be working with the Speculus Office um, to uh, sail us through to our destination. Uh, thank you, uh, Porsche. Um, Oh, he kind of holds out his hands as if clutching your face. The Burgermaster. It's so wonderful to have you here. A leader of men, natural figurehead, absolute treat. Um, well, what can I say? Well, need say no more, really. Um, your responsibilities, if... Um, it is quite agreeable. Is sorry, Anya. Could you? I know it's having to mute back and forth, but hearing my own voice is killing my brain. Um, your responsibilities are as grand as your reputation. New Quivershank is going to be a wonderful colony. We all know this for sure. But with your touch of leadership and your brilliance in the civic realm. I wondered if you might take some time on this voyage to do a little bit of designing, sorting out the priorities, organizing our people, um, just putting your touch of brilliance to the, the new colony in the new land. How does that sound, Burgermaster? Ready to lead? Absolutely. Uh, uh, whenever you are willing, Emperor. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Getting ahead of the game. And of course, Sir Brutus's job as ever. Not just... like that, you dirty guys. What's it? This is funny. I literally didn't even think of it that way. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Anya will find a way for that to be an innuendo. <laughs> he looks down at little Brutus and makes the little... Mm, your job, Brutus, is just to be the cute little pumpkin that you are. Can you do that for me? Can you do that for old Ernst? Uh, Brutus would just. <laughs> wow, Fishkin. that was really good. <laughs> Fishkin would look over to the Burgermaster and say, like, I'm sure I have some lovely bits for Brutus in the kitchen, Burgermaster. <laughs> She's unmuting. Oh, I thank you. I'm sure Brutus is here and you'd like pat him on the head. Would be most appreciative, Pushkin. <laughs> no problem, my lord. Only the best for my baby. <laughs> well, I do have some fillet left, if that would be amenable. <laughs> Delightful. What do you think, Pushkin? No, fucking Pushkin. <laughs> Fuck, we're getting sick of you. <laughs> The Lord um, keeps going and says, um, your responsibilities speak for yourselves, but of course, keeping the Quivershanks first in um, fine shape, ready to fight. I'm sure we won't need it, but uh, what's its use as a dull uh, dagger, eh? He makes a little wimpy looking stabbing motion in front of himself. Um, and uh, Elsie is taking care of the, the nitty-gritty, as we said. Um, but yes, uh, this is a momentous moment. We are making history today, setting out. Master of Sail, are we ready? Ikito Tone just gives a very bored-looking nod back to the Lord. Wonderful. Well, uh make yourselves at home you of course all have your own private cabins you can see them all around you just here uh, elsie has your designations 
Um, if you wouldn't mind, uh, those of you with responsibility amongst the citizens, just doing a bit of, you know, putting yourself around, having a chat, giving them a bit of reassurance. The common folk like to have a little touch of the, the, the upper crust, if you will. Get them feeling excited for their futures. Um, but, uh, well, for now, I suppose, you're all uh, dismissed. And he makes a little saluting motion on his head. Which can starts clapping. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Well done, everyone. Well done. And Elsie makes a motion for everyone to, to leave the meeting room. Porsche yeah. would um, want to sort <laughs> of tail Toria. Yep. Um, on the way out and sort of get her attention from her diminutive form, sort of um, sort of tap her on the side and sort of say, um, uh, you're captain of the 1st Battalion then in charge of the Marines, I heard uh, our Lord say. That's correct. I, I know this is a strange request, but um, ever since I was little, I... Uh, I've always had quite a lot of respect for um, marine types, and uh, I, I, well, I, I'm sorry, I'm so embarrassed. Um, I, I've really just, I've always sort of dreamed of being a marine myself, but I never really had the, the aptitude, I guess. I, I, I wonder if you, it's, I mean, obviously, if you're too busy, then it's not a problem. But I, I'd love to see how you and the rest of the marines work, maybe. Just get a little bit of a view on, view on into how you run things. Definitely a social check, whichever you think is appropriate, please. Deception, if that's okay. Of course. Fuck. Yes, uh, <laughs> seven. Oh, she rolled low at least. The eyebrow raises, looks down at you. Does Porsche carry her weapons openly? 100%. Her, her scimitar. Yeah, she'd look at that and be like, it's a fine looking blade you have there. You're telling me you don't know how to use it? <laughs> it's more of an heirloom, really. My, my. She looks down for a second and says, my, my father gave it to me. Um, it's, mm. uh, you know, a bit nervous being out here on the waves um, you know the stories and you never know what we're going to face so I thought I'd keep it at my side it's never really seen not a, much use though not a bad instinct at all um, yes I see no uh, issue with this um, I know your quarters are up here um, but should you wish to to get a, a good well the best way to get a, a good idea of really how we function is early morning or late evening. Uh, our quarters are just the first deck down uh, from the main deck. If, uh, you're welcome to come and chat with the guys. I'd like that. Early evening or morning, you said? Early morning, late evening. Um, uh, throughout the day, my, um, my marines will be going about their own business. As long as they keep their themselves sharp, I don't mind what they do, but early morning and late evening is when we do our drills and check in properly with each other. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for letting me do so. I'd, I'd love to come see them in action. Of course. She gives you a, a little smile and walks off. Yeah, she just dropped back sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So, one, how do... one, more, one more thing. I'm sorry. No, please. From and, earlier, anything and everything. when she was doing her walk around. Yep. What are there? Lifeboats. <laughs> there is not a single lifeboat aboard this vessel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought. The vessel itself. I mean, there's. You could fill a long scroll with all the things wrong with how. Um, the Lord has handled this. You know that the Serrated Isles aren't that far away. There is no need for a huge ship. There is no need for a warship. 
Many uh, different ships would make more sense. There's no lifeboats from your inspection, though it wasn't hugely thorough. There doesn't look like there's that much backup. Things like sail, rope for rigging, so on and so forth. The warship, as awful as it is, looks to be in fairly decent condition. Um, but it's... Yeah. You, you with a, a good Sari vessel, could get to the Serrated Isles and back... Uh, in the time you think it will take this vessel to make it halfway there. Jeebus. Yeah. Pretty bad, then. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. Mm. No lifeboats. Nothing. Okay. Well, we're not going to sink, so it's fine. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what, what we said about the day. Yeah. <laughs> Unsinkable. <laughs> cool. If nothing else comes to mind, I would like, and if anyone wants to jump forward, they can, otherwise I'll just pick people. I would like you to describe to me if, because nothing is forced here, but if, and if so, how, your characters uh, introduce themselves or interact with their wards, their groups of um, citizens that they've been given to um, look out for. Hmm. Hmm. How many of have, how many of them are there again? You have twelve or thirteen okay. each. Your lists are in the journal under your oh, character's yeah. little box. Um, I have an idea how Pushkin would do it. Mm -hmm. He'd gather up the Telson family, mm -hmm. who are like. Mostly cooks, herbalists, once a kid, and the farmers of Fallowfield, Chuck, and yeah, that lot. He said yep. have two groups, and then and then have Tick Tar, Tick Pan, and the Burnhammers in a separate group because he okay. wants to show the first group the supplies and what mm -hmm. they have. Got it. Yeah, that would be. So and the, he, the other two groups, he just introduced himself for. Yeah. So the other, yeah, the other two groups, he just introduced himself, and it's quite a lot he'd do, really. But yeah, he'd want to know what Tick Tar and Tick Pan used to hunt in. He'd want to know how the Telson family, like, because one of them's a cook and one's a herbalist, how they interact and whether Ernst Telson is amiable to learning to be a cook. Um, he'd also want the farmers to interact with the Telsons quite a lot because he mm -hmm. feels like that would be good. Amazing. Yeah. Um, quick answers. Uh, the goblins um, speak in quite broken common um, but communicate to you that they are proud hunter-gatherers. Anytime you're like, what did you hunt? They're like, we're hunter-gatherers. Um, and would emphasize that they work with almost like a scavenging mindset where everything should be used. So they will gather herbs, useful roots, um, berries and such, but they'll also hunt um, up to and including their own size. If something bigger needs to be taken down, it's done as like a, a group of goblins together is what they'd emphasize to you. But they are very much sort of jack-of-all-trades. Um, but Pushkin would know that uh, goblinoids typically are found in woodlands, so you know that their hunter-gathering, hunting and gathering is done, like, in a woodland setting. He'd like that, though, because he thinks at the beginning they just need to scavenge as much food as humanly possible. Oh, yeah. Um, and he would also... If the tel Maven Telson was around, introduce them, them to Maven Telson and try and impress on them that anything new that they find they should show to her first to discern whether it's poisonous or not. Amazing. So very much building connections between the members of the group. Yeah. And he, he would push for um, the Telsons and the Fallowfield to all humans and farmers yeah. and cooks herbalist he'd be like trying to make them one group <laughs> he'd be like yeah if you stay with them they'll look after you 
That's fine. Yeah, you, you have enough sway on the ship that you can move people around in their lodgings on the citizen's deck. So, And I, I think they would all agree. Um, in terms of the child, Ernst, um, the parents would be a little reticent at the idea of like choosing a career for a six-year-old already. Um, but would be very impressed by Pushkin's garb and demeanor and know him as this like highfalutin guy and a friend of the Lord, um, they would make a point of telling you that Ernst is named after the Lord Quivershank. Um, Ernst Helston is named after him. Um, and they would be easily won over. Um, he would also ask Seria Telston, he's 13, yep. how she feels being his apprentice right now. Mm -hmm. Because she's only 13, he's an amazing chef. Mm -hmm. So much he can learn, and then he'd pull out one of his cookbooks that his name's on and be like, well, yeah, she can have that. <laughs> <laughs> she is... Um, uh, a 13-year-old, she's quite wide-eyed, amazed at the cookbook. Um, she looks up to you, and you can see the twinkle of just like complete awe and inspiration um but the way she talks she kind of babbles a little bit about some of her dishes that she's prepared it kind of sounds like she's got some techniques and such already it sounds like you've you've got a pretty good little protege here you would be pleased you know you have much to learn but you have a good starting point dear <laughs> <laughs> she'd just be super excited and yeah with all the little connections you made and the choices you made uh, in your draft, um, it seems like you actually are beginning to have, even just in this first morning, quite a happy, close-knit little community um, of your people that you've chosen. Um, the only one that sidelines themselves a little bit, um, apart from the obvious um, uh, strangeness of the gunker, Chuck. Um, yeah. Though... The gunker seems to be very happy to be just be part of the crowd. Um, it just kind of sits and slightly sways from side to side with its malleable form. Um, so it, it's not... It's visually distinct, but otherwise seems to want to be part of the group. Um, but the one who purposely sets themselves apart is the gnome, um, Deeran uh, Havan. He would want to talk to him, though, and be like, what do you expect from this new continent? What kind of um, fauna do they have over there? Is it large? Is it small? Is it particularly dangerous? Is there stuff that we could eat straight away? Like a bit like rabbit, you know, things that are easily small and catchable, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. He would tell you um, and be very excited that you're engaging um, with him once that you make a point of meeting him on like his terms and uh, the zoology terms he completely just like erupts like a volcano um tells you about all his theories about the different animals how uh jungle climate is isn't one that's really well situated on any of the other um land masses of archivia and so he's unbelievably excited to see what that kind of um ecosystem could um lead to in terms of uh different evolutions different species um he has some uh, evidence of uh, things that are theorized to be from the Serrated Isles, um, bodies of animals um, that have sort of floated out to sea, little bits of uh, flora uh, as well, but it's all very theoretical. But yeah, you, you can definitely see someone who's just as passionate about their, their, um, uh, their creed as Pushkin is about cooking. Like the last final group he'd want to talk to, the Burnhammers, mm -hmm. and work out if they're able to build any, you know, cooking equipment that is beyond the pale, what they'll have to try and find in this new land so they can make a forge, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Very practical core Burnhammer. Um, you know, the kind of contract worker almost style of talking just like yep can get you a forge set up i'm gonna need this 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 and this can't do anything right now but this is what i'll need once we're there i can have a look at what's going on 
Um, and he he seems very proud of his uh, daughter Kelta, and talks about what they're going to do. And it's like, That's, and what we're going to do then, Kelta? She's like, then we're going to make sure the bellows are there. He's like, That's right. So yeah, they seem um, geared up a little a little bit more unsure, less sort of bubbling enthusiasm, but but a practical um, adept. Um, Nate, uh, air that I think Pushkin would probably appreciate. Yeah, so he'd basically have those, he'd have a food group and he'd be trying to push all those guys together in, to make like a little community. Um, Amazing. Even with this sore grief guy, because he's the dad, so he might as well. He'd mention to him maybe if you want to go talk to, um, you work for me, but you can go towards the Burgermeister because he knows way more about fashion than me. Like, okay. I'm sure we'll be able to compliment anything that we do. And he brought, he'd want to talk to Chuck, though. Okay. Yeah, he'd be like, so to what do you farm, uh, Chuck? Chuck, who I just have to get his... Um... No, 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 <laughs> no. No, 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 no. It's, it's token out. I love this token so much. I'm going to put it on the main ship. Um, I'm going to show it to everyone because it's the best. Where is it? Oh my god, it's massive. Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> yeah! As um, you approach him, because before this, there, there's no mouth, but as you approach him, this mouth begins to crease along the this shifting um, jelly-like form. Um, and then as you talk, it's almost like watching bubbles come up in water. These, like, bubbles of air just go... And he talks in this kind of lurching, slow bit of common. He just says... Rooms. He's not that big, right? <laughs> no, he's not that big. Okay. I just wanted to show off his token because I love it. Say rooms or mushrooms? Mushrooms. And after he says it, the the mouth just turns into this huge smile all across the, this blob head. Pushkin like, beautiful, beautiful. Well, you should be in charge of mushroom and maybe even truffle farm. The smile kind of goes even further, and the the mouth hinges up like a like a lid of a jar, and the what you think probably approximates a laugh from this gunker is just like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, Trumpful. Well, Chuck, um, if you have any questions, come to Old Pushkin. I'm in uh, supply, Derek. Uh, what do you plan on doing on the voyage? What big bubble comes up? No. Rooms. Where do you plan on growing them? I've got a burlap sack with some soil and if you need it. No. Oh. And a little, like, a little like pseudopod grows out and he points down. He said down. At the base of, in the cargo hold? Big smile and a slow nodding of this giant blob head. Oh, in the manure! The pseudopod like comes up almost like for a little high five. Still nodding. Just kidding, we did it. He's like, you have the right spirit, Red Chuck, making use of everything. Ah, I agree, I agree. Maybe we can cross pollinate some, yeah? Push, good. Chuck. <laughs> good. He, like, um, gives him a. Well, he puts his hand out. It's like, I look forward to what you come up with, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> the little pseudopod, like, slaps the hand for a second. And you expect it to get all slimy, but it doesn't. 
actually. There seems to be, it's almost like a, a, a thick membrane around it, and it just kind of slaps against the hand, and the big smile just sits there as he looks at you. Yeah. Push. You'd uh, give him a wave, and then Pushkin would return back to the kitchen, pretty happy with how the morning's gone and how he's bossed his little people about and tried to form a community. Yeah, 100%. Yes, master. Mm. Roll a... Uh, if you have any proficiencies in any social skills, feel free to use those. But otherwise, just roll a charisma check. But whatever you roll, do it with advantage, because that was excellent. Very nice. Yeah. Seems to have started off very, very well. It twiddle his little cane and be like, <laughs> and like tap it on the deck and <laughs> return to the supply closet. Very good. Anybody else? Yes. Figured out how they yeah. would meet their groups. Oh. Any preferences? Who wants to go first? Danny. Yeah, first. Okay. Um, so. Oh, sure. Portia would introduce herself to the entire sort of group um, at once, mm-hmm. and she would she would very much make a point of saying she wants like there to be a chain of command, but she also says she wants like her leadership to be quite relaxed, and you know she wants to sort of to this to be an enjoyable journey, and she wants to make yeah make a real point of just being like she's like you're a le- I'm a leader you can come to if you need mm-hmm. me like. I, you know, I don't. I don't want you to see me as like you know, um, some intimidating figure. I want you to be able to come to me if um, that's needed. Um, mm-hmm. She would. She would though um, appoint Crowley and Burnhammer as her second in command. Um, mm-hmm. uh, she says as part of the thing, and she builds up like a quite a big deal in front of everyone. Maybe slightly embarrassingly so. Mm -hmm. that he's a retired soldier and she spins this whole story about her father I won't make it up but if you can get you imagine the gist of like this story about her father being a retired soldier and being um, Mm -hmm. being a soldier himself and having died for Hespia and she has so much respect for soldiers and um, she would make a point of making him second in command and also on top of that she would make a point of saying to him that he will on um, despite his responsibilities he will have an extra hour off more than anyone else a day to take care of his son oh. and he would say the same to anyone else who has got children within the group I don't know if like Pelsey Dance not Pelsey Dance um Tick Oof and Tick Hab are related. Uh, they are. Uh, the Tick is a family yeah. group. So I would like obviously give Tick Oof time to look after Tick Hab. Um, within that. Um, furthermore, um, she would say also that she wants Dazra Talk um, and wants him to work especially closely with Portia as he's the only engineer they've got. See. And he says that engineering navigational engineering is going to be extremely important oh very cool yeah um, especially um he would also make a point of um appointing the young pelsey darn strip as mm-hmm. her apprentice oh and she says while she doesn't have any official responsibilities because obviously she's still a child she says mm-hmm. she would like her to watch Portia in action and sort of see how she gets on. But more importantly, she wants her to maintain a good relation with the other crew. So her parents are obviously with mm-hmm. other people. So she wants her to be like a, a line of collection between the, the other merchant families. So and she wants um she wants her to feel important and she wants to feel like the other crew can come to Pelsey and be like Hi, can we see your mum and dad for these sort of things, kind of thing? And okay, very she, cool. She, she is thrusting like a fair amount of responsibility on eight-year-old shoulders, but I think she's doing it in a very kind of like, you know, you know, if there's anything overwhelming, you don't have to worry about it. You're, you know, they'll turn the day is still a kid, and but you know, you, yeah, she just says like, I can see potential in someone like you. You remind me of myself. Uh, 
she would lap that up. And the idea of her being this useful element for her parents and this kind of front mm. of house for the merchant sort of way, she would adore. You can see she's very passionate about her parents' um, business. And excuse me, the, the people respond very well to this idea of time for their children. Um, Cro Crolian, um, I'm sure Portia would just kind of push through, but Cro 50 uh, eight's quite uh, old for an orc. Yeah. Um, and he is quite a rude individual. Mm -hmm. I think the, probably the first thing would be like, you're smarter than you look to appoint me. Um, comes across quite rude and judgmental, but with an air of wisdom from a, a long life um, yeah. about him. Um, and would kind of stand up a little bit straighter from his crooked back at the idea of uh, being appointed uh, second in command. Um, his his son, Kor, um, is who... Is he, so he, his, his crit is his grandson. Oh, okay, that's who I've, uh, I've got um, overseeing. Not I've not got Kor yeah. on my list. No, Kor uh, is the... Um, the dad, but Crit would love that. He Crit comes across as very fast, um, enthusiastic, and Kerwin is the mum. Um, okay, so you yeah. do you do have a, a lineage uh, going down there, um, and uh, Dazra Talk would um, uh, be excited to work with you. Seems very buzzy, uh, inventive, um, and. Um, comes across as a bit of a gambler, someone who likes mm -hmm. to take risks. Um, but yeah, very good. I think being very clear uh, with them, well, roll a, a social role of your choice for me, please. There was two other people as well I wanted to... Um, oh, of course, yeah. Um, not as important, but she wants to also insist that everyone um, should, if they've got important messages to get, um, to send up the chain of command... Um, mm -hmm. That they should see everything goes through the swift pads. Um, Very good. Yeah, she says that she wants them to act as sort of like personal messages for her, so that she can communicate with the rest of the crew really easily, and also um, report to Speculus Office Mills as well. Very good. Yeah, they would be um, pleased uh, with the thought of not spending their time just lounging around. Mm -hmm. um, they seem quite keen to to move they don't look very comfortable on the ship yeah. um, so the idea of, of racing around seems to appeal to them a lot cool very cool yeah if you could roll uh, a social check for me again with advantage um would deception be okay absolutely fine yeah it's it's just an overall roll get a sense of the charisma coming through mm, 12 not great yeah, those dice bounced around in a mean way, um, but that's fine. Very good. Yeah, so quite again, quite functional and building little connections and structures within your group. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. Um, Salia. Salia so, gives everyone a little fist bump as they come up on the on the ship. <laughs> the whole group. Awesome. And yep. as she does, she invites every single one of them to uh, a, br a ship breaking in uh, night of drinking. Amazing. Even the 14 year olds. <laughs> Especially the 14 year olds. <laughs> yeah, just have a, good, have a good old night. And she'll dish um, some little jobs out in the morning. She'll say to, um, I think it, I think it will. R2, um, especially, no, no, mm -hmm. Aryan, Aryan, especially, that she will say to that person that is, oh, she's a bugbear? No, he's a bugbear. He's a bugbear. He's a bugbear. Yep. And she'll say to him, especially, like, the ship is a load of crap, so it's going to be your important job to look out as far as possible to see where icebergs are coming. <laughs> and make sure <laughs> we can move out of the way in time. Because <laughs> I don't trust a single one of these guys. <laughs> so I'm appointing you especially. And she'll also say to Chris as well, the survivor list, that she's mm -hmm. going keep to her, keep her quite close because um, she thinks uh, her skills will be important as well. Keeping out for storms and stuff. Very um, cool. And she'll also say to anyone 
But if anyone wants to learn how to actually be on a ship and not die, then just stay close to me and yeah, you can learn by watching. <laughs> Amazing. Very different to the other two. Very awesome. Yeah, there's um, a variety of different responses to your attitude. Um, mm. But it actually seems like, it's particularly with the goblinoids, of which you have quite a few, they they appreciate the kind of sense of being let uh, let uh, left to mostly do their own thing. Mm -hmm. um, picking out our yarn um, turns out to be a really smart move. Um, our yarn and our two are a couple, mm -hmm. and our two is very wary of non-forest folk. Um, so you connecting with uh, our Jan, who's a lot more gre uh, gregarious and interested uh, in others, um, seems to be a good way in for the both of them, mm -hmm. and um, very much responds um, in kind to your kind of um, chummy, casual thing, likes the idea of the party, likes mm -hmm. your kind of attitude to this thing's a, this thing's a shit show, let's make sure that we're all right. Um, really likes that attitude. Um, Krez is an interesting one. Very old. Um, the mm -hmm. scales of the the lizard folk cracked and worn and scarred, almost like a map of the world just across the skin of this old lizard folk woman. Um, but as you speak to her and expect practically like a croak coming out, her voice is still strong and you can see beneath the lizard's uh, skin and uh, she wears quite a um, minimalist set of hides and things like a vest and shorts. Um, she's covered in all sorts of equipment and you can see muscle there. She looks like she can handle herself. Um, speaks to you in a very um, pragmatic way and... Um, would speak to you because it, it's quite clear um, from your demeanor she would speak to you in sari ooh in sari yeah she herself um, explains that she is ex sari with her age she didn't want to be a burden on the water and that's quite a common mm. thing amongst the sari towards the end of their life many of them either settle down um on land somewhere or some set off on a solo ship which is one of the rare instances where you get solo um, sailors for the sari um, she says that she settled down in Hespia and would laugh and say which she immediately regrets yeah. um, but that is good to see um, one of the 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 wave the sea folk um, in charge nice should definitely spend a lot of the night chatting to her. They're probably, yeah. Put, but I know they don't talk about their history very much, so she probably wouldn't tr press on that. But um, should probably just chat about how shit the ship is, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, and Krez has much to share in that regard as well. But it's very pragmatic in her uh, demeanor, and so she doesn't just go along with the insult. She's also like yes, that is terrible, we could fix it with this, 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 or oh, yes, yeah. that part of the ship is likely to break. We must make sure in a crisis that we move to the back mm -hmm, side of it. Mm -hmm. Like All these like practical ways of thinking about things. Mm, that's one thing as well, I should say to everyone. If you see me run into a place on the boat, you follow me. <laughs> they would definitely <laughs> respond to that. Very good. Um, if you uh, want to pick out a social skill that you prefer, persuasion, deception performance uh, anything with charisma really or if you just want to roll a straight charisma check but whatever you do do it with advantage yeah i mean it's just yeah it's a zero on all no worries straight roll with advantage okay 13 very cool and the burgomaster how do you integrate your little group he doesn't. <laughs> he just he get everyone together and just be like, Now listen, guys, I trust you all to just really do the best you can. <laughs> so, don't fuck it up, yes? Oh. Uh, would be all he would do. And uh, Richard would be, yep. Oh, no. We've got Boris Johnson on the ship. <laughs> um... <clears throat> Okay. 
your um, the, the people would be quite taken aback. There would be, and the burgomaster would a hundred percent notice this. There would be a few little sort of whispers between people. Um, is that the burgomaster? Is that the guy who got caught with? How, Please, Howard? Be like they're thinking about how great my hat is. <laughs> Very good. Um, let's see. Any particular responses? You'd get rolling, rolled eyes and sighs from the two from the artist family, the Sanborns. Um, you would. A few of them would be listening properly. Um, Charter sophist Henwin. I'm going to be honest, a lot of the reason why I'm not giving any advice is because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about either. <laughs> but he definitely well, Very good. No, I, I, it makes perfect sense for him. Um, would any of them actually speak up? Yeah. Um, you say this and uh, a halfling man, um, thick um, uh, sideburns, coming down towards the chin, big smile on his face, little set of spectacles perched on his nose, um, hands, uh, fists on hips, looks up at you and just says, what? Is that it? Well, what else do you want? Well, I mean, is if you've got no instructions for us, then... Does that mean we're free to do as we please with your um, blessing? I did give an instruction. Well, yeah. All right. Understood. Gives you a big smile and a little mock salute. Am I detecting some insolence, boy? <laughs> I don't know. No, sir. Oh, absolutely not. I uh, I just want to understand where we where we um uh, stand with each other. But um, if you're saying do do your best, and it's up to us to interpret that, loud and clear, Gov. I'm pretty sure I also said don't fuck it up. Oh, of course, wouldn't dream of it. Oh my god! I see. I want to give more advice, but I genuinely don't know. <laughs> Is is there anything you want to ask as a player? Yeah. What do I? What would advice would I give? Because I don't know how these other people know anything about this stuff. What do you mean? You've got your list of people, the Burgermaster's yeah. pumpkins. Paint a portrait of the Burgermaster in the Paint journal. A song about the Burgermaster. Right. A poem about the Burgermaster. <laughs> you should see the look that Tom's giving me right now. Are you quite <laughs> done? The Burgermaster's <laughs> pumpkin. So you got a list of, of the people that you're in charge of. If the Burg if you think of the Burgermaster as having previously been in charge of like large sections of a pretty big city, I don't know if he'd want to like appoint people as deputies. If he's someone who shirks responsibility, then he might want to palm... Uh, just be like, you, you're in charge. You sort them out. But you know the Lord has asked you to look after these people. He talked to the prospector mm -hmm. and appoint him the, like, ringmaster, I would uh. say. Prospector Aaron the Brave. Or Aaron. Yep. Um, he doesn't necessarily trust the tieflings, but he's picked them anyway because it's a tailor and he needs fancy clothes. He yeah. needs them to make him a fancy suit. There's also a shoemaker in there somewhere, I think, as well. No. Uh, Kieran's got the shoemaker. God damn it, Kieran. It did, uh, Pushkin did say that to talk to the Burgermaster because he's probably got more ideas about clothes than he did. Yeah. You make a fair point. Um... Yeah, he'd just be like instructing them to glorify Lord Ernst as much as possible. <laughs> Does he give them any details? 
Or does he just say, give glory to Lord Ernst? Yeah, because the reason why he's picked all of these people is so that, that, well, the reason why I picked all these people was because when he gets to where they're going to, mm-hmm. New Quiver Sale, um, the merchants are there to sell him stuff, the architect's there to design him a fancy new house, the engineer's oh. there to make sure he has a nice bathroom, etc. <laughs> Poets and painters and sculptors to glorify him and tailors and stuff to make him look fabulous. <laughs> he's, let me get this straight. He's picked people it. as if he's like displaced the his little realm, his little life back in Discovery and just plonked it down uh, at, in New Quivershank. I don't know what's so hard to understand about that. <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> Everyone else is like, right, what skills do I need? And he's just like, oh, yes, would love a tailor. Uh, I, make I sure. picked the people with the skills he thought that they would need. I didn't <laughs> say that they were the right skills. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Okay. Um, appointing uh, this prospector um, is a mixed, uh, has a mixed reception. Um Dwarves are culturally uh, very driven, very, very driven. So the the uh, Aaron absolutely is just like, yep, I'm going to make the fucking best of this. I won't let you down. Um, um, I'm not allowing you to say this because when I made a sweeping generalization about Italians the other day, you told me I was racist. Um, so you can't say all of this about dwarves. Well, I just did. Um and the others respond in a, some of them a little bit fearful some of them unsure the artists aren't impressed but it seems like the artists make a career of being unimpressed um the prospector herself just find her that's even better because if they're unimpressed they're not going to steal all of my gold yeah very true and all of my fancy hats okay yeah, the, the prospector um, makes a point of saying, yep, we're going to make sure we get there, we keep our heads above water, um, and has a bit of a sort of um, grimace on her face as she mentions the water. Um, and you <laughs> stride off to wherever you're going to with the group in um, a, a fair bit of disarray. Um, could you roll a social skill of your choice for the Burgermaster? Um, persuasion, deception, whatever you like. Um, with disadvantage, please. <laughs> Just imagine, like, why have we got all these doublets and hoser? Why have we work clothes? <laughs> why, is this a, why have we got bright pink? Um, what this thing's called? Ruffs. Everyone oh. needs a thousand you ruffs. Wear, you wear the informal ruffs for your day job and then the formal that's <laughs> for dinner amazing what did we roll uh, 10 got it yeah it, they're, they're left in, in something of um, a disarray but I will say uh, you do see the prospect uh, um, going about um, trying to organise people it is honestly a miracle that Discovery did not burn to the ground. <laughs> Indeed. Um, okay, excellent. So, with everyone having met their uh, their groups, um, it's up to you um, what your characters are doing at this moment, but the ship begins to set sail. Um, the long... Um, uh, wharf of the south harbour um, um, of Discovery begins to diminish behind you. The colourful buildings, the um, the variety of people all starts to dw- get smaller and smaller and begins to dwindle as Icky Telto and the Master of Sail calls out orders to the sailors aboard the ship um, who move around and it seems, um, despite his faults, that Lord Ernst has hired uh, a capable group of sailors as the large ship begins to lumber and slowly creak and turn um, from the south towards um, the west as you begin your journey. Um, 
Could I have police? Our navigation role for today. Portia, mm -hmm. you're going to be doing a survival check for me, please. With advantage. Uh, 14. The halfling power. 14, very good. Yep. With the, the land diminishing behind you, it's very clear the way you're heading. Um, the um, even smaller the new form of um, the specular sophist uh, mills shows you, begins to show you the maps and the different navigation equipment that she's using. Um, it seems that you are well on track, which means I can jump us over the little sail map. Hopefully everyone can see that. I can. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you bring out your, your range finder, you've got to the Serrated Isles somewhere between a thousand and a thousand one hundred um, nautical miles to reach there. The navigator, uh, the specular sophist, informs you that um, the ship will do an average of about 10 miles an hour. When uh, It's a pretty good ship. It's got a lot of uh, sails to it. At its maximum speed, it can get up to 12. Um, and if the, the winds are a bit dead um, or a bit low, it can go down to 8 or even lower if the winds die altogether, which would be really bad. <laughs> yep. Um... Stalia understands uh, what yeah. this journey may entail. Let's go um, here. <laughs> 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 to North Hestia. Um, but um, with each um, tile representing about 42 miles, 12 miles, uh, or 10 on average um, miles an hour, takes you about four hours. Of course, this being a ship. It's going to be traveling um, all hours of the day. Um, so you can travel uh, six tiles in a day. So if you want to move six tiles, if you can control it. I think I gave control to everyone. But I didn't. Oh. Ron Henley, you the navigator. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So as the ship sets out, carving through the water, again... Salia, you're just reminded as it doesn't move with the waves, it doesn't really move uh, with the wind that well. Though, you will, um, uh, you do have to admit that uh, Icky Telter knows what he's talking about with the sails. They're doing a pretty mm -hmm. good job, but you can read the wind and the waves better than them, and it's like watching children um, just getting <laughs> lucky. Um, the ship doesn't move with the waves, it carves through them, and you begin the journey almost wincing at every. Yeah. Um, brutal splash that yeah. cuts through them. Um, but could I have, for this first day of travel, um, let's have... Well, what, one thing I'd want, Pushkin yep. would have told the cook and the little boy who's a brother, I see. Mm -hmm. That he wants yep. them in the kitchen every day. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the, the young cook um, would... 100% um, be on board with that and would assure you, um, reassure you that she'll make sure that um, little Ernst will be with her each day. Ernst would be doing the washing up until he's trusted. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Um, can I have, I've remembered how to do this now, can I have everybody roll a charisma check for me? Just straight charisma, no advantage or disadvantage, just a charisma check. Oh, cheeky net 20 in there. Ah, yes, the Burgermaster. Oh. Wait, Porsche, Salia, Burgermaster. Okay, so it's between the two of you. Um, Can I have Burgermaster and uh, Pushkin roll again, please? Who gets the lowest? The Burgermaster. So... Oh, this is perfect. Um, maybe halfway through the day, um, Burgermaster, um, if, 
well, you would the Burgomaster while away his day with uh, the Lord Ernst in his cabin? Would he be up on the deck strutting around? Would he be in his own place? A combination. Yeah, okay. Combination so I'll say you're you're with um, the uh, the Lord in his cabin when there's a, a heavy knock at the the Lord Ernst's door. Elsie Winchurn, who's ne never uh, far from her um, client's side, um, is straight to her feet, moves to the door, um, and uh, opens it wide. And you see um, someone you know, uh, Dorwell Darnstrip, the cheeky halfling merchant before, um, is being held by the scruff of his um, tunic um, off the ground, legs um, kicking in the air and his arms flailing around seems to be putting up all sorts of protest get your hands off me I wasn't doing anything and um, holding him you see someone who you don't recognize a dwarven fellow but you do recognize that he seems to be wearing the uniform of the, the marines on the ship get your hands off me get your hands off my penis <laughs> <laughs> no, no Friday night dinner oh, references. It's not Friday night dinner. It's that weird Australian oh, lesbian it meal. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought of fucking that old dude that you always reference all the time. Um, <laughs> Mr. Morris, that's it. Um, he said he holds him up and points him, almost like gesturing with the halfling towards you, Burgermaster, and says, "I'm not having this." This man swindled me. How do you respond? I swindled you out of what? I was but he told me that he had good sapphires, rubies, gems, that they were good stuff. And look, and he holds out his hand and you can see this like cracked red gem in his hand that looks like it's crumbling away into almost like sand. And the doorwell in his grasp just like I thought he understood. I thought he could, he could see it in front of his eyes. It's not my fault. He doesn't know gems that well, is it? I thought dwarves knew gems. And the the dwarf continues shaking him. It's just like, what are you going to do about it? It's your responsibility. I'm pretty sure that's racist, Dwarf. <laughs> Dwarf's like, you what? Can't be swindling a good man out of out of his money for some rubbish gems just because we think he's a dwarf. Uh, you said I was free to do as I want. Mm, that's not quite what I said, Dorwell. The dwarf kind of shakes him again. And it's just like, what are you going to do about it? Well, my good man, there's not really a lot I can do until you put him down. Tosses him down onto the floor. Well, I think firstly that that was unjustly uh, violent. Um, Dorwell apologised to the man, and then man apologised to Dorwell. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. <laughs> <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the dwarf just looks dumbfounded that you'd even ask him to apologize to this guy. Um and Dorwell just crosses stays sitting on the floor, but just crosses his arms and just says, I ain't done nothing wrong. Oh my good man, why did you look at it, buy it, and then decide it was rubbish? The dwarf kind of closes his jaw. You're telling me that this man, a merchant, under your responsibility, sold me duff gems, and it's my fault. I'm not saying it's your fault exactly. I'm just wondering, questioning exactly why you didn't notice the uh, inferior quality of the gems until after the sale had been completed. It does seem awfully suspect. Poor, 
throws his hands up in the air and she's like, I don't need this. Looks at the the Lord um, Ernst, who was just there watching, like he should have popcorn in his hands. He looks at him and points at him, at which you see Elsie kind of flinch slightly nearby. Um, just points at him and says, this expedition is doomed from the start and just stomps away down the corridor. I'm very much enjoying Tom's like acting behind the scenes here. He's actually pointing at me and being like weirdly aggressive. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, He's role playing. He, 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 well, yeah. Um, well, Salis is like, well, how much did he take from your star? He calls that to the dwarf. Yeah. No, the the dwarf just stomps off. Well, I could hardly make reparations for the man if he just walks away mid conversation. Orwell just turns around. He's on the ground. She's like, "Am I free to go then?" Little smile. No, Dorwell, you are not free to go. Why are you swindling this? Actually, actually, I am actually quite confused. Why this dwarf is like? He sold me some shit stuff. Well, yeah. You looked at it first, and then bought it, and then decided it was shit. I don't really see how that's Dorwell's problem. But maybe that's because I work with a load of entitled poshos. <laughs> um, it seemed to be that Dorwell, at least from the, the dwarf's demeanour, that Dorwell had made him think that they were better quality than they actually were. What was, like, magic? No, didn't seem to be any magic. Hey, at least the dwarf didn't claim so. She paid a pool. The magic of persuasion. Well, then that's his fault, really, isn't it? <laughs> I'll keep this so in mind. Confused. You never had a, a guy who's like, oh, yeah, look at this watch. It's the best watch you'll ever have, blah, blah, blah. And then you get home and the watch is broken. And you're like, oh, fuck. Would you not realise it was broken there when it wasn't ticking? No, because it's all... He's, it's salesmanship. Yeah. Flim, flim flam man. Yeah. You've never been scammed. <laughs> well, no, I'm just confused as to why he'd be like... Think, like, think of it like uh, if, you, if you bought a car, right? And you get it home, and two days later, the uh, gearbox breaks. Yeah. No, I understand the concept, but that's different from like handing over like a, a broken candle and being like, look, here's an amazing candle, and then being like, okay, and then being like, hang on, this candle's broken. No, because the gems came apart after he'd gone away. That wasn't explained. This is the reason for my confusion. Oh, I thought it was... Anyway, there you no. go. It was obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm just... So you just say... You're not free to go to Dorwell. Yes, you're Dorwell. You can't be going around trying to con the people of this good ship out of their money. How much money did you take from the man? Do an insight check. <laughs> wow, he, uh. ro he rolls great as well. <laughs> uh. Um, wasn't a huge purchase, boss. 50 gold. That is rather a lot of money, Dorwell, for someone as poor as that dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> right, die. you're right. <laughs> you're, right. <laughs> you're right, boss. I'm sorry. I'll, um, I'll, I'll give him the money back. Yeah, 50 gold back to, to old Thut Kane. That's his name. Is that actually the amount of money that he took from the dwarf? Yeah. Is it, Tom? <laughs> you rolled your insight check. I'm yeah, giving yeah, you the information no, that the Burgomaster gets. Right, this is not the Burgomaster. Oh, this I see. No. How much did he take from him? Uh, in the hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> but the Burgomaster doesn't know that. Dorwell stands up, dusts himself off. Free to go then, 50 gold. I tell you what, Dorwell, I'll give you the 50 gold 
and then you give him his original amount of money back. <laughs> the Burgermaster thinks that 50 gold is the original amount. <laughs> I'll give you 50 gold, and you can give it to him, then you keep the 50 gold, okay? But make sure you make it up with him. Of course. Thanks, boss. <laughs> Holds out his hand. <laughs> Holds out his hand. Did you give him 50 gold? Yes, I would. Fine. Takes it with a little skip in his step, and it's like, see you later. And walks out the door. God, just made 550 gold. <laughs> He's having the time of his life. I have picked the worst fucking people. <laughs> So the Lord, Lord Ernst is immediately just like, see what I mean, Elsie? Leader of men. <laughs> and Elsie just you... lets out a long sigh. <laughs> well, you know, gold's probably not going to be worth much if it goes badly. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very true. Um, wonderful. Who was, who was next? It was Pushkin. Yeah. <laughs> um... Pushkin, you're getting used to the kitchen. It is not as nice as the setup you had um, back in um, Discovery or Crucible, where you were before. Um, but it's decent. Um, with all the purchases you made, you're surrounded with the tools you need. You're working away. Um, Seria uh, is awestruck, just awestruck, being in a, what is to her this amazing um, professional a kitchen she watches your every move ask lots of questions um and it's maybe an hour or so into you're getting to to know each other and and understand how each other work in the kitchen um when she just asks you this 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 innocent child or teenager's question and just says um as you're sort of preparing food um well actually Fair's fair. I kind of assumed this with Pushkin. You can tell me if I'm wrong. Would Pushkin prepare the same food for everyone aboard the ship, or different food for the Lord and the retinue, and then for the passengers? He would... The Lord would definitely get his own food. Mm -hmm. let, me yeah. look at the... let me look at the rest of the people. The Burgermaster would get better food. Oh, yeah. The... The Lord's the Lord's purse would get better food. Mm -hmm. Not sure about Elsie. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, they're, they're the big people in his mind. So he'd make a small dinner for those lot. He mm -hmm. wouldn't eat from that. He would eat what everyone else is eating. Oh, okay, interesting. So yeah, chopping and and. Uh, the the business of the kitchen goes ahead and Seria and these questions have kind of gone back and forth between the two of you just as you're working over the shoulder um, and she just says um uh, chef why is it that the the lord and, and some of the others get different food to the the passengers oh my god if um <clears throat> I had certain privileges in life and um, um they have earned it back in Hespia. The Burgermaster is a fine upstanding man and well the Lord funded this expedition. And the Lord's purse, well he he is connected to the Lord. I fully expect when we reach uh, New Hespia people will work harder and will have a certain division there yes, of Food for everyone. He was listening the whole time, just kind of nods and says, "Okay, so, so when we're there, um, you think everyone will will be like a? It doesn't matter what they earned before; everyone gets a chance to earn again. Well, everyone except the Lord. He is above us all." Okay. Thanks, Chef. And she kind of ducks her head down and gets he, busy he, back again. He'd put his paw on her shoulder and be like, if we work hard, we can earn new titles, new privileges in this land that we did not have before, Miss. You understand me, girl? 
think so. Could I? Could I be a a duchess? <laughs> It's difficult to say. A lord styles himself as a lord. No one else has a title, but... Well, maybe not a duchess, but you could live a good life if you ascend to my position. I live very, I live very lavishly back on Hespia. Ah, uh, well, um, if I could have even, even a bit of... Uh, what you have, Chef, I would be very happy. Um, things with gods, is there a natural hierarchy of, um, in Hespia, is there like a natural hierarchy of, is it like feudal system? It, it's not too far um, from the feudal system. However, um, it, in South Hespia, um, because of the ash that falls each year, people are drawn into larger um uh settlements and so the the hierarchy is more enforced whereas in north hespia people are a lot more spread out um there are there is a ruler for each settlement um they enforce their will through uh, more civic means than militaristic um so i would say uh, it's more like Yes, earnings go, money goes up in the system. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I'd say it's a little bit more broken down feudal system, but cer certainly South Hespia is close to it. Yeah, it basically say we're li we're leaving for a new land. Anyone who can prove themselves of ability and well, important to the functioning of a group. Will probably be bestowed privileges. There aren't many of us. Maybe those who follow, we will be their sires. She kind of nods slowly, soaking it all up before getting back to work. Seems Christian quite quiet. Would be like, so to make the Lord's meal, it might be a useful skill if we we're trying to pursue this avenue. Mm. She would gasp and be very excited by that. You'd be like, plum sauce with pigeon. <laughs> and start, this is how you make a plum sauce. And then start um, going ahead. Amazing. Okay. Very, very good. Good. I have, as this day is about, this first day of travel is about to close out. Could I have... Um, I'm just going to nominate someone. Can I have Salia uh, roll a d10 for me, please? A single d10. If Hannah is there. Might be lagging and such. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Uh, Pushkin, could you roll a d10 for me, please? It does make me think what his, um, you know, views on hierarchy are. Yeah. Where is my d10? I'm going I, mad. It auto-loaded, um, the wrong one. Oh, shit. No, uh, I got a two, though. A two! <laughs> okay. Um, can I have everybody uh, roll a perception check for me, please? Oh! Burger Master. 15, 7. For Hannah. Um, I'll up update if uh, Hannah rolls and beats the nat 20, but the likelihood is not. So... Uh, perception, please, Hannah. Um, Burgermaster, you, are, you decide after your little um, confab with Dorwell um, to take a stroll. Um, uh, little Brutus needs his walkies. You need to take a stroll around uh, the main deck of the ship. And um, uh, thank you. 
Anna. So yeah, definitely the Burgermaster um, is the first to, to see this. Um, as you're strolling around the main deck of the ship, making your way around, you have your um, <laughs> traditional nose stuck up in the air. Um, and as such, the nose stuck up in, in the air and you're, you're looking down on people actually gives you a good vantage point. As you make your way to the back of the ship, you notice um, that in the otherwise unbroken sea, um, in the wake of the ship um, behind you, you see a very large, dark shape beneath the water coasting along in the wake of the ship, seemingly following the quiver sail. How do you respond? Well, it was my first instinct. Drown in the dungeon. <laughs> um, he'd probably think, hmm, odd, and go and talk to the Lord. The Lord. So you make your way um, uh, to the Lord's chambers. In there, you hear the sound of uh, a piano being played by Elsie. Um, he wel he welcomes you in. Uh, Burgermaster, please take a seat. Elsie just began her second recital. Oh, yes, wonderful, Elsie. Um, my lord, there's been something uh, somewhat troubling I have spotted on my, my daily promenade. Uh, oh, Please, uh, I value your uh, input, Burgermaster. Please tell. Uh, well, well, um, you see, I was I was at the back of the ship, and uh, I happened to see something in the water. Uh, I I think it might have been something somewhat dangerous. It might have a deleterious effect on the health of the ship. Oh, and the piano just stops doesn't jar or anything, just the, the music just stops immediately and Elsie slowly turns round on the the stool and is paying attention. Such a drama queen. Lord Ernst just says, oh, um, well, that sounds uh, potentially quite, um, quite a little pickle. Um, how, uh, how do you think we should proceed, Burgermaster? Would it perhaps be the most um, uh, prurient thing to do to uh, maybe establish what the creature might be first, my lord? Yes, I, I was thinking uh, just the same thing, of course. Um, do you, um, how, how might we, um, how might we do that? I genuinely have no idea. Um, divers? <laughs> or people stationed around the ship at all times? Uh, keeping watch to make sure that uh, nothing A, nothing happens, and B, they can make note of what it is if, or any characteristics if they see it. Is that what the Burgermaster says to the Lord? Okay. He'd be like, oh, yes, sounds sounds perfect, Burgermaster. I, I leave this in your capable hands. If if you need to requisition any of the uh, the um, well, I suppose we should <laughs> we should let the sailors keep sailing. Um, but um, if you need to requisition any of the Marines or um, uh, the gunnery crew or the citizens, you um you have my full authority. Thank you, my lord. Of course. Of course. Does the Burgermaster get up to leave? <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love the Burgermaster so much. He's cool. Okay. Um, oh, okay, this is difficult for Elsie. She can't leave Ernst. Um, yeah, she she would wait. So eventually when the Burgermaster leaves, um, as you make your way out onto the main deck again, you'd see a small crowd has gathered at the back of the ship. It seems others have have spotted um, this dark shape in the time you spent listening to Elsie's recital in the Lord's Chambers. Um, 
Some of them are starting to call out, just like, well, what do you think it is? Maybe we should tell someone. Um, does the Burgermaster go over to them? Yes. I can only speak from my experience, by the way, and you're laughing at me for not leaving. But also, when someone starts to play the piano and you try and get up and leave, it's really fucking awkward. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think he'd just be like, well, marvellous, marvellous. And then by the time he would be like, so, um, she's already started playing another song. Wait, so is he yeah, yeah. staying? No, no, he would stay, and then, then the, eventually he'd like leave, and then okay, he would go out, and then yes, he'd go over to them. Okay, what does he say to the group? What does he say? Anything? Fear not, citizens of the Quiver Sale. I have this all in hand. Uh, has anybody spotted anything identifying about it? You see there's a couple of uh, the kids on board the ship in the crowd. Little Calstray Burnhammer looks up and it's just like, It's big! Why, thank you, Master Burnhammer. Um, <laughs> anything else, anybody? One of the, the... You see it's one of the Marines turns around and says... I don't like the look of it. It's been. It looks like it's swimming along behind us. It's big, sleek. Not sure. I'm guessing as he's an imbecile, the burgomaster wouldn't have any idea. You can, ro- you can roll a nature check. Okay, maybe I will roll a nature <laughs> check then. Not it's just like. <laughs> can I have five, five, five across the board for his step? <laughs> He's amazing. How do we roll? Oh, 16! Um, you spent some time. Um, a particular mistress of yours had an interest in. <laughs> don't raise your eyebrows at me like that. Um, had a particular interest in ocean life, wanted to be a, a marine biologist. Um, and so you learnt a little bit, you read uh, bits and pieces to impress her. Uh, which worked quite well. Um, in your reading, uh, you uh, read um, that there are a number of different, um, very large uh, creatures in the um, the seas around Hespia. Um, many of them have been have been landed by um, fishing ships. Um, in general, uh, taking food from the sea is not frowned upon, but um, it creates a tenseness in a lot of communities. Um, there is a, a, quite a reverence of water and the sea, um, even in such a, a built-up and developed um, society as Hespia. Um, it, it still survives amongst the people. Um, and so what you end up reading about is a lot of different legends. Um, there are legends of these great whales and and huge sharks and other creatures the fact um 16 the fact that it, it does seem to be one uh long creature leads you to think it is something with with fins it's not a, a giant squid or anything like that um it looks like it, it's either going to be uh, a very large uh whale that's following along behind the ship um or the more worrying uh, potential is that it's one of these uh, legendary sort of razor, uh, razorback sharks that live beneath the waves, um, and that should it wish to, could deal heinous damage to the ship itself. Sorry. Yeah. So that's what comes to mind for the Burgermaster. Looks like it might be a whale to me. Some of the crowd, um, you hear murmurs of agreement, like, oh, yeah, right. Just, uh, just a big whale, and they start to disperse. Does the Burgermaster want to do his his plan, or...? What plan? He doesn't have a plan. <laughs> yes, you did! You told oh, the yeah. Lord that you'd station people around the ship. Yeah, go on then. Okay. So you walk around... Does he pick out people in particular, or is it just the first, like, 
people he came across? Well, well, it sounds like most of the first people he'd come across would be children, so perhaps not. <laughs> I don't um, know. But, yeah, probably anybody who looked... Like the first people he came across that looked vaguely trustworthy. So not Dorwell. <laughs> Dorwell's off doing his own thing. Um, cool. You pick people out. Um, this early on in the trip, none of them are particularly resentful of being given this job to do. And it's, it sounds important as coming from a man dressed so uh, importantly. Um, they position themselves around the ship. And does the Burgomaster consider that the end of the ordeal and head off to do his own thing? Pretty much until he hears anything else. Okay, very good. So with the, the people put on watch... You head off to do whatever the Burgermaster does uh, with his spare time. Um, the day rolls on, the sound of the crashing waves against the side of the ship and the fluttering sails above, the sailors going about their business. You notice, uh, any of you unfamiliar with a ship uh, might find it interesting, that the, the sailors work in shifts. They shift out and a new set come on to get their work done. The others head below decks to sleep. Um, the the day begins to draw to a close. Is there anything that anyone would want to do as the day comes to an end? Mm. There is something mm -hmm. cool she wants to do, yeah. Mine's really quick. Do you want to go second? Yeah, you, you go here first, Salia. Yeah, Salia. Yeah, Salia just gathers everyone for another drink, asks them what they were doing all day. Excellent. Make sure it was uh, useful, at least. Her little group. Yeah, all the little group. Yeah. Many of your group have, um, which I think was a purposeful thing with Salia's choices, have practical professions um, and can continue to work on their professions even whilst on the ship. Um, carpentry, you can see they, they've been working on bits in case the ship needs patching. Um, they've been sizing up the boards and the timber used for the ship and matching it to some of their own supplies that have been brought along. Um, the tabaxi um, isn't particularly um, amenable to your sort of casual um, style. Drinks are refused quite um, snootily. Um, and... In so many words, not in a direct confrontation, but essentially tells you to mind your own business. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. The um, the scout Aryan tells you that he sized up um, the, the, his like viewpoint from the top of the mast and says that everything seems clear. Um, the other standout ones, uh, Lock Arrowhead been working on um, a set of arrows, unsurprisingly. Um, and the, the young human scribe, Tyler, um, tells you that she's been going around um, the deck above um, with the marines and the gunners and the crew on it mm. um, and has been asking them for stories of their adventures um, previously on the sea and has been writing them down. Um, she's, the she's not asking them particularly formally either. She's just sort of while yeah. thinking, going around casually. How's everyone's day been? Kind of thing. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, poor Took, the hobgoblin inventor, says that he's set himself up in a little room um, uh, below decks, which the Lord has allowed for with special request. Um, Cred says she's just spent, and would again would talk in sorry. Says she's just spent the time, kind of like <laughs> making a, a prioritized list of what is likely to go wrong first on the ship. Nice. Um, and the the, the the three keen um, speaks in a language that you don't understand. It's a series of um, strange sounds coming from the mandibles, this insectoid um, humanoid figure. Um, but seems very excitable and talks kind of at you at length um, whilst swilling from the, the drinks provided. Um, yeah, she would listen at length. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, you can make an insight check. See if you pick yeah. anything up from body language and repeated patterns of sound. Well, well yeah. Um, you get the impression... 
from body language and kind of uh, like almost miming um, that um, Gifter, the Three Kings uh, known as, um, has just been very busy. Has been very busy um, and has spent, it seems to be pleased with the day they've spent doing lots of hard work. Yes. Yes, Ali would be pretty happy with that as well. you be yourself busy. She probably would have done similar stuff. Very cool. But yeah, that's it. Okay. No response to the tabaxi. Just letting him, letting him be snooty. Let him chill. Okay. Very cool. Uh, Portia. Portia wants to go visit the marines and see what they're getting on in the evening for their drills. Yes, absolutely. As you head down to that first deck, um, there are some sort of uh, wary glances um, over looking at you, a civilian uh, coming amongst the marines, but they're quickly uh, stamped out as the the captain, Toria, strides over to you and, and welcomes you to the deck and just says, um, glad, you, uh, glad you turned up. Um, it's, not, it's not the royal... Uh, guard, but um, well, I'm proud of what we've done, and she she points over, and you see the marines themselves are currently drilling in sparring pairs Mm -hmm. Um, they're working which, um, I don't know how much experience Portia has with uh, military stuff, None. but that's okay, it's quite an impressive sight, they're sparring with their real uh, swords. There's no like training things or anything, and you notice as they're going along uh, patterns of of movement. They, it's almost bordering on a martial art yeah. um, amongst them, and you would notice that two of the marines in particular seem to be leading this martial art element. Many of the other marines kind of look over to these two, mm-hmm. almost like they're checking their form to correct their own. Um, you'd notice where are they? Martial artist. Yeah. Um, the two uh, martial artists are hobgoblins. Okay. Um, two female hobgoblins. They look quite young. Um, and they seem to be leading this element of the, the drill. Um, if she scanned her eyes over, would there be anyone else that particularly stood out to her? <sighs> Amongst the Marines. Mm-hmm. Um... You would notice that um, she might recognise. Do uh, either perception or insight. Your choice. Do you can, so they're both exactly the same, so it doesn't matter. Ah, there we go. Either one. Fuck's sake. Six. Okay. Um, a couple of things still stand out. Very obviously, um, from their demeanour with each other, Toria has a brother amongst the Marines. Looks mm-hmm. to be an older brother, orcish older brother. Um, he his body language is quite like uh, very caring and protective towards her. Yeah. Um, you would notice, yeah, you would notice this person one hundred percent. Very young, uh, looks like an ephemeral elf, um, uh, and doesn't uh, observe the martial arts. Is very clearly a fencer. Mm-hmm. Um, fights with a rape, like practices with a rapier, and is going through different motions, and has a very um, straight back, good posture, um, highborn sort of demeanor to them. But look, looks young, looks to be in their like mid to late teens. Um, who very much contrasts against a lot of the others who look quite grizzled. Um, I think probably the last one with the roll of a six um, that you would um, notice is. A uh, very large um, marine doesn't wear the uniform the same way the others do. Has like a, a ragged vest over the, a very uh, well muscled uh, chest. Instantly recognizable with large horns on their head is a minotaur. Um, mm-hmm. She'd perk up at that. Yep. Uh, the Minotaur is uh, is observing the martial arts, but seems to have uh, their own spin on it. Very brutal movements, a lot of muscle, um, has quite a, a dark look about themselves. Um, has Portia seen 
the person before that she's looking for? Yes, this is who she's looking for. And she, yeah, she would immediately recognise them. Yeah. Um, she would turn to the captain, um, or the what was her name again, Toria. Yep. Um, and just go. Um, you got quite the quite the crew here. I didn't realise you trained with real weapons. Thank you, yes. Um, I was hesitant at first. The, uh, the, the, the Pels, and points to the, the Hobgoblins, uh, insisted on it, and we've been better for it ever since. I'm proud of them all. You should be. And even... Got a minotaur here. <laughs> yes, um, Dern. He's um, he's not someone you can really turn down in a military outfit. I mean, his strength is unrivaled. No nobody I've ever seen has matched uh, has matched him muscle for muscle. He's um, he's a bit of a wild one, but he's he's done well for us. I bet, uh, I bet you Marines, uh, have anything like my father used to say, that you work hard and you play even harder. <laughs> I, um, I allow them to celebrate a, a day's hard work as they see fit. Um, it's person to person, really. And her brother kind of slaps her on the back, who's been hovering nearby. And just says, Toria doesn't drink a drop. Never has. No matter how much uh, the the lads throw at her. Won't touch it. Oh, you're missing out. Nothing. She kind of gives you a, a smile. Just says, I take my work very seriously. Um, just like my father. Always on duty. Yes, we uh, we need clear heads aboard the ship. When I when I said I didn't really have the aptitude for it, I suppose that's uh, when my father never really took for me being a, a potential potential marine. Uh, I was a right handful in my youth. I can tell you that now. Hmm. I bet I could drink any of these under the table, even that bloody minotaur. She says that quite loudly. The drill's sort of um, dying down now, and. As you say that quite loudly, um, in particular, a, a female dwarf halfway down the line is slightly out of breath from the the exertion of the drill. Kind of goes, oh, hear that, Dern? And the minotaur with a, a huff through the nose. It's like, what? That little thing? And looks over at you, Portia. Yeah, she kind of stares at him for a moment, and then, uh, uh, yeah, she just kind of stares him down. She doesn't say anything. He kind of hocks an eyebrow at the stare. It's just like, you got some nerve on you, and starts to walk over. And you can both feel and see Toria slightly move to be in front of, like, slightly positioned in front of you, um, Portia. Portia kind of bites the inside of her lip, trying to um, her like on her gum, like trying mm -hmm. not to show any sign of it. But she's quite like uh, biting hard enough to draw blood. Um, and then as she does, she kind of like lets go and then grits her teeth together and kind of like bears a smile in his direction and just says, "Would there be any like really hard booze in Hespia that or like?" Oh. Yeah, plenty of different um, liquors with such a, um, a coming together, a melting pot of different cultures, um, any, many different... Any particular, like, names of anything in particular? Sorry, I'm probably making you think on the No, no, point. that's fine. Um, I would say, honestly, probably the halfling culture would produce the hardest uh, mm -hmm. liquor anyway, with their culture of daring each other. Yeah. Um, an easy way to heighten the stakes is to keep having harder and harder... Uh, liquor to come through. Um, 
And I, honestly, I think it would have a simple name and it would come from kind of the center of halfling culture in Hespia, which is Merryhold. Um, mm-hmm. So I'd say Merryhold Red. Merryhold Red. Uh, she would say, um, I was practically raised on Merryhold Red. <laughs> I may look, not look like much, but you wouldn't stand a chance, mate, I'll be honest. The Minotaur crosses his arms and makes a, a point of flexing the muscles and looks down across the, the rippling torso down towards you. Um, Portia and just huffs again. You've got no chance. Prove it. He like shakes his head and and turns as if to turn away. And the dwarf that spoke before is just behind him. And it's just like, you're not walking away from this. You gotta prove it. Halfling dare. Sacred bond. He's right, you know. Turns her back around. It's just like... Sizes you up again. Fine. When? Now? Let's make a... uh... A special occasion of it, shall we? Let's say tomorrow evening. Let's get a bit of an audience going. There's nothing like a drinking contest to get people excited for something. He leans down and forward comes a, a large hand for a handshake. Yeah, she kind of grabs his hand and then she grabs it hard. Mm-hmm. It's like when a, yeah. like as 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 well as she can for such compared to his giant hand, she um it's very much like when a um like a, a much like older man um you know grips your hand way too hard sort of thing mm. for no fucking reason. Um, huh. Yeah, go ahead and roll a strength check for me. She's not the strongest, but. Um, she is proficient in athletics, if you'll allow me to use that. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it doesn't increase it by much, but... Nah, not good. <laughs> Let me see. Hup. Rolled for him. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah you, you go in with a an, an iron uh, clasp to your hand, or so you think, but the hand just disappears inside this giant mitt uh, of Dern Bloodhorn as as it c- comes around yours, begins to squeeze. Go make a constitution saving throw for me, please. Fifth, uh, 14. That's fine. As he squeezes, you can feel the bones in your hand begin to shift and move. Mm-hmm. Um... And you have to kind of bite back a, a bit of a yelp in the bubbling up in the back of your throat. But as he's leaning in and squeezing with his hand, Toria just pipes up and just says, "That's enough." You can see there's there isn't an immediate obedience. Um, there's a hesitation before Dern stands back up, kind of almost in a dismissive way, lets go of your hand, and just says, "Tomorrow," and walks off, stomping away. Tomorrow it is. She just stares at his figure walking away the entire time. Yeah, Toria gives you a a look and then just kind of says, I um, made it my business never to, to get on the bad side of a halfling and, well, I wish you the very best of luck tomorrow. She kind of doesn't like answer it immediately like leaves a noticeable kind of like three to four second gap and then sort of like just suddenly turns her head up and smiles at her and says ah it's all in just in good fun isn't it Mm -hmm. she gives you a bit of a penetrating look um roll a deception check for me please Sixteen. Okay. The the eyes are narrowed uh, for a moment before she just says, "Yeah, um, I think it's good for the 
for us to get to know the civilians. If you wanted to to bring along uh, any friends or or acquaintances, um, tomorrow evening perhaps we'll all celebrate the beginning of the voyage together. I've seen one of those uh, sorry folk getting all their peons together. I imagine she'll be in a partying mood every night, so I'll see what she's got to say. That sounds good. Well, um, have a good evening. And you, and thank you again for letting me see you all in action. Quite the honour. My father would be, uh, he'd be impressed. She gives you a, a warm smile and a, a bit of a knowing nod um, before heading off to uh, address the marines individually, just checking in with them. She just stares for another sort of five to ten seconds at this minor tour. Um, yeah, you can you can see that as he's headed back to his uh, hammock, so the hammocks out here on the deck. Um, he's gone into a footlocker and pulled out a a blade and begun mm -hmm. to sharpen it with a whetstone. Yeah, she um, she would leave um, and she would go to her private cabin and um, she would just like she would lock the door if there was a lock on it it would be yeah um, and she would just sort of take off her long sort of trench coat and sort of hang it on the back of the door on its hook um, go to the sort of small which I imagine is quite a small bed for a halfling and quite low to the ground and sort of kneel beside it and take um, the sword out. Um, and you'd notice she's wearing sort of a long white sleeved kind of shit like sort of cottony kind of shirt that she sort of um, is kind of held at the wrist is like held down with these like sort of black kind of um, quite tight like almost too tight, you think, for like sort of not a it's kind of a, I don't know what the material would be called because I can't remember what it's called, but it's like kind of like a rubbery kind of elasticity to it. Material. Mm -hmm. But it's but it's tight. Um and she kind of like pulls it very tight and like pulls them off and then like slowly winds up her shirt and um if anyone was watching in on this they would see deep kind of scars all along her arm up her underside of her arm and she um takes her scimitar and she you see like sort of um there's kind of like beads of sweat running down her face um she kind of like spits out a bit of blood from where she bit into her um gum earlier and she takes out her scimitar and she just slowly cuts into her arm um, mm -hmm. and then as the sort of blood pours down she just like grits her teeth and um, closes her eyes and um, she would grab like a, a cloth nearby and just um, just like hold it on the wound until long enough for it to sort of stop bleeding heavily and then pull the shirt back down once more wrap it in the hard tight elastic and um yeah get into bed mm -hmm. point of inspiration i think thank you for that amazing i've got one more thing to add to my story please just a little bit because I just noticed the name of the tabaxi, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So a little bit later in the night, so Salia's getting drunker. She does a little speech. I'm not going <laughs> to do the speech, but she'll get like a little drunk speech. Yep. With Thaumaturgy getting in there as well, making oh. it really loud. Very cool. And um, she's just talking about the nobles and how they're all uppity and look down on everyone and blair to all of them and why the ship shouldn't have all these roles and should all work together as a team and then she looks to uh looks to the tabaxi 
And she's just, um, well, we all know who will sink or swim at the end of the day. It's those that don't work as a team. Don't we? <laughs> you would see very uh, clearly Claws, um, the tabaxi who's been sat on a, on a storage crate nearby um, and sort of only sipping drinks coming round. Um has the, their hands resting on the crate and you just hear the sound of uh, cracking wood as the the claws dig into the sides of the crate as the tabaxi holds eye contact with you as you say that. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 she does it in like a sort of challenging sort of way, not so much a, an aggressive way, but, mm-hmm. it's, um, but she definitely looks directly at her before turning back to just her speech and ending it with a big like booming sound and lots of drinks flying everywhere <laughs> very cool and you would uh, 100% um, have noticed drunk or not that um, a lot of the, the different cultures even within your group um, really come to the fore the goblinoids kind of party together um, telling stories um, in goblin um, um, that uh, well, does Sully know Goblin? No, no, no. Telling stories in Goblin that sound very exciting from the um, the tone in their voice. Um, the uh, the two Sandborns, um, Serica and her her daughter Serge, um, have little drinking contests. Even though Serge is mm-hmm. only fourteen. Um, very much all of these people that you've chosen um, take on a real um, party vibe. The gifter, the three keen, has a drink in each of uh, their four oh, hands. Hell yeah. Um, and it's just going hell for leather. Um, <laughs> Krez is enjoying and actually would bring to the party uh, her own sort of moonshine distilled um, nice. liquor, which is very strong. Um, but yeah. It's a successful party, and there's a there's a real sense of bonding there. Yes, yeah, that's it though. Very cool, very cool. One thing for my sleep. Yep. Pushkin would just want to go watch what the gunk is doing downstairs in the hold. Okay, interesting. Just wants to see how he's growing mushrooms and all that stuff. You make your way down. Uh, into the hold Um, you can see down there various uh, bits of cargo the sounds of um, unhappy livestock and animals coming from one side in a a caged area Um, you find Gunker um, at the back of the ship the very back uh, end um, in the cargo hold Um, He's hunched um, over, and as you come round with, uh, well, actually, your tabaxi, you've got dark vision. Um, would uh, Pushkin have like a lantern or just using his own dark vision? And he'd have he like make a him ball lantern. Known? Um, yeah, he'd have like a ball lantern. Yeah. Um, Chuck, uh, you see as you come around the corner. Um, stands up he'd previously been in a like a hunched position and you see this almost like little nursery um of just tiny um uh i don't know what it's called for a mushroom bud budding um mushroom bodies um beginning to to grow it's actually quite like impressive stores. yeah it's it's quite an impressive amount of growth already just for the the day um, that you've spent there. Um, and you would have noticed that as he was hunched over, he had multiple of these pseudopods stretching out from his body and each pseudopod split and split and split again. So you end up up almost like a root system coming down to the mushrooms themselves. And it looks like he's he's feeding the, the mushrooms from um, food that you can see is floating through his body and kind of being it's almost like a, a mother bird feeding her young it's being like digested and and molded inside his body to then be exuded through the pseudopods to feed the mushrooms 
Yeah, Mr. Skinner would be like, Oh, very good Chuck, working late, are we? He uh, returns to his standing position and the, the pseudopods all retreat into his body and you see that the familiar air bubbles begin to make their way up towards the the head and you see the mouth form once more. And he goes, Always brooms. He pats him on the back and he's like, feel free to carry on. I just wanted to see what you were doing down here. He reaches down um, and with a very gentle pseudopod that turns into almost like a little uh, trowel shape scoops up the little patch of of um, uh, soil and you can also see like molded uh, wood in there as well and holds it up right uh, in front of you with a big smile on his face and just says brothful beautiful beautiful I'm glad I chose you to be under my well in my little cohort you seem very very keen you see a, a bigger air bubble notably bigger sort of come up and louder than perhaps he needs to uh, stood so close to each other just goes friend he'd hold out his little hand and be like friend you see the the pseudopod come out and just like momentarily wrap around your hand and it doesn't shake up and down it just holds the hand and the big smile impossibly gets even bigger um on his large green face and he just says rock friend and pushkin's like yes pushkin friend <laughs> And you see that smile just stays there as he releases your hand. Uh, Pushkin will be like, I, don't, I hope you don't mind if I sit and watch for a while, Chuck. Mushroom. And he just turns back to tending the little mushrooms along the floor. Yeah, Pushkin would probably wait for, would watch for about 20 minutes just to see his process and then bid him adieu, go back to bed. It's, it's impressive. He tends to each one like a little child of his own, making sure they've got enough nutrition and they're well bedded into their their growing medium, as you were. Yeah, and as he left, he'd be like, push, can you devil you? As he twiddles his <laughs> um, cane on his hand and goes back to bed. <laughs> okay. Um, the night passes depending on your previous experience at sea perhaps you rest well uh, in your beds um, perhaps not so much perhaps some of you prefer a hammock all can be provided um, any who spend uh, any moments near the Lord uh, Quivershank's quarters would hear loud uh, comfortable snoring um, of Lord Quivershank happily dreaming away of new Quivershank ahead um but the night passes and a new day dawns. Take us back here. Could I please? Portia. A survival check, please. For our navigation check for the day. Of course. Um... Oh, uh, sorry, with advantage because you are being helped by Speculus Office Mills. 17. 17 is absolutely fine. If you want to move us another six. Oh, sorry. Before you do that, oh. thank you for catching that. Um, we need to, uh, to check the weather first. Could I have um, from anybody a d20, please? I'll take the first one that rolls. Oh, boy, howdy. A 17. 17. 
So, the weather is changing. With that, could I have a second D20, please? Wait. 14. Okay. Those of you, um, actually, if you guys are sleeping in the quarters um, up to the top of the ship, you would hear this. You'd hear the sound of rain drumming on the wood, um, the decking above you. You hear sailors calling out to each other. Um, the rain isn't too heavy at the moment, um, but it is constant and the wind's picking up. As such, with the wind picking up, you can actually sail at 12 um, miles per hour. And 12 by 24. So that's 288. Each one is. So you get an extra um, square of movement. So seven squares forward, please. One, two, three, four, six, seven. Very good. And the navigator excitably, um, the speculus office points out that you, you're about halfway already. Um, even just after, well, this will be towards the end of the second day's travel, but you're making very good progress so far. Um, with that in mind, the new day begins to make sure I don't lose track. Now, on the very last day of Cena's Grasp, Tomorrow will be the festival day. Do, 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 do. Perfect. Could I have everybody, please, once more roll a charisma check? Straight charisma. Two, 13, six. Okay, Salia is the lowest. Interesting. Um, Salia, as you wake up, uh, you notice that um, in your uh, room, in your space uh, where you slept, there is, uh, that wasn't there when you went to sleep the night before, though you were drunk when you went to sleep the night before, so maybe you're mistaken, there's a little wooden sculpture, um, maybe the size of um, palm of your hand, Looks like a little humanoid with four arms. A little wooden sculpture. Mm. A little figurine. Pick it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you pick it up. Doesn't feel strange. Feels like worked wood. Looks um, quite well done. Um, not by any means uh, an incredible piece of art, but you can... See, it's a little humanoid, four arms, doesn't seem to be holding anything. Quite a sort of um, standard posture. Hmm. Arms out to the sides. Just kind of figures. It's a random gift. Puts it back down. Yeah. Yeah. Go about your day. Yeah. Second was Pushk 9. Yeah, Pushkin. Uh, actually, no. Sorry, we're gonna do um, Porsche instead. Um, Porsche, you Porsche. awake. Um, the sound of heavy knocking on your door. Yeah, she would go and answer it. On the other side of the door, immediately recognisable is the the elderly uh, orc that you put in second in command, Crolian Burnhammer. Um, he says in a gruff tone, "Sorry to disturb you. Um, Not at all. I wondered if I wondered if I might have a word in private." Yeah, yeah. Come in, come in. Makes his way inside. <clears throat> it's no easy way to say this, and I'm just gonna come out with it. I I don't know your connection to that uh, starry woman and he spits on the the, the wood of the, the decking the floor and I don't know if you know that she's a bloody tiefling yeah I've seen 
but it doesn't seem right to me that someone like that should be in charge of other people on this expedition. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm making a point of saying this, because I like to mm-hmm. make my character's intentions somewhat known, because... Um, Obviously, I don't would never would never particularly want to play a racist character. Um, <laughs> yep. Porsche is like really one of the least, least racist people you'll meet. Mm. With that in mind, she says. Um, she says, oh, "I can't help but agree with you. It's um, but it's not in my hands, unfortunately." Uh, Lord Quivershanks recruited his own little um, his own little posse, as it were. But we should keep our eyes peeled, right? He's like nodding along. Right, right. Yeah, well, I know how it is. The the generals, the higher ups, they they do their own thing. They don't listen to the the wisdom of the common man. Um, well, uh, how about uh, I uh, put our minds to rest a bit? I'll, I'll keep an eye out on that one. I think that's a good idea. Um, there's a lot. Of, there's a. I've been looking into the crew manifest, to be honest, Crowley, and then, um, there's Sari and ex Sari amongst us. Um, You're joking. Yeah. More of them? Mm hmm. They've got a fucking minor tour. In the Marines, ex sorry. That's disgusting. In the Marines? Yeah, I know. One of the ones with weapons on the ship? Yeah. My mother was a Marine. She, uh. She never would have. You know, my father, he, he was an invalid since I was, you know, young, really. But she, you know, fought for Pespia and fought for our country and. Well, you know, it just kind of spits on the name of it a bit, in my opinion. Amazing. Do a deception check. With advantage, this guy is eating it up. Uh, 20. Dirty 20. Yeah, there's like a little sparkle in his eye. He's like, well, sounds like an honourable woman. There's nothing your, your father could have done either. That's just a poor hand dealt... Yeah. Uh, well, is there anything we can do? I know that. Well, you'll be a uh... high and mighty tiefling is going to be untouchable. She's in charge, but if it's just a grunt, one of the marines. You've heard one of the sayings: uh, "Keep your friends close, but keep your enemies even closer." Um, of course. Come round the hall tonight. You'll see. Um, I've already put some things in motion. I've. Uh, I've invited him to a little drinking game. All right, get him all liquored up. Yeah. Drop their guard. Exactly. I don't want to. You know, I'm not saying doing anything violent or anything. You know, just we're just we're just we're just making sure they they know we're here. Taps his nose. Yeah, understood. I'll be there. Yeah. I'd be glad to see you there. I'm, I'm, I knew I had a good feeling about you. Yeah, you, you too. You keep that yeah. uh, boy of yours strong, yeah? Of course. Always have. Always will. Good to he kind of it. gives you a proper nod and makes his way to the door to head out. Yeah, she kind of sees him out and then shuts the door and then spits on the fucking floor. Yep. <laughs> She really doesn't like sorry. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you very much. Um, could I have... Uh, of course, interrupt me if there's anything your characters want to do. There is something but... I want to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Um, Portia would get herself ready after this exchange and head straight to Pushkin. Oh. Um, Pushkin easy to find, Kieran? He'd be in the kitchen. Yeah. 
as expected. Very easy to find. She's always in the kitchen. She kind of pop, oh, yeah. she kind of pop her head around the corner, and I imagine like Pushkin like stirring some kind of great broth or something uh, atop the um yeah the thing. Um, and she would like uh, morning Pushkin. Oh, hello, you. <laughs> it's alright. I'm, I'm not exactly a biggest personality in our little friendship group. Uh, I'm Portia. Portia Light Hollow. Sister uh, Navigator. Uh, yes, I remember you from the meeting halls. Well, um, well you obviously know my name. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who couldn't? You're uh, quite the celebrity around here. I've got everyone in my little, under my little wing sort of chatting about you. Yeah. Well, when, it, when you're the one feeding everyone, then I suppose it's good to know my name. Quite, I mean, to be honest, that's why I came and saw you. Um, I've, uh, I mean, I don't know what you know about us halflings, but we are pretty famous for our, you know, dares. Um, and well, I couldn't resist, to be honest. I got myself caught up in another dare. Um, and I, I, you know, I've been challenged to an old drinking game. And to be honest, um, you know, I got a bit of a reputation to uphold amongst the people. I, you know, I sort of oversold myself maybe a little bit as a, a big drinker, and you know, someone who could take their booze no matter what. So um, I was mostly wondering, do you have anything um, in your your finer cooking career that you've put together, maybe that? You know, we'll line the stomach extra good and make sure, uh, you know, it's not going to get, I don't want to get, I don't want to get too drunk, you know, I want to, I want to have fun, I want to, I want to win this little dare of mine, but I don't want to, uh, I don't want to be drunk under the table, if you know what I mean. I have something that you kind of like narrows his eyes. You don't think he can win, yes? Is that what you're saying? She kind of like, uh, like sort of sighs a little bit. She's like, "You got me." I'll be honest. I'm a pretty average drinker, to be honest. I just I am, talk a big real, game sometimes. I have no real interest in drinking competitions, but um, you pack my back, and I maybe can give you something to pack yours. Of course, you you name whatever, and I'll if it's within my power, I'll I'll make it happen for you. So he's got this almond milk, mm. which if um, she managed to spike the other person's drink with, it could put them asleep. Mm. It's very... Hang on. I'll um, just got to find the manual. No, very cool. Uh, I will ask as well. Um, I, I'm fucking loving Porsche's weaving uh, around. <laughs> but I, I'm... I'm not. I didn't ask for a deception check straight away because it's, it's being done so well that Pushkin has no real reason to believe that um, that Porsche is lying right now. Pushkin so I was gonna... doesn't tear it, but he's going to ask for something. Perfect. Yeah. He's not going to give no it to need. him. This is yeah. No need for any of those checks then. Almond milk. Yeah, she sort of specifically sort of say, have you got any, mechanically, she's like, have you, you know, I'm not going to say, obviously, she wouldn't say, have you got anything that would give me advantage on my constitution saves? So, uh, he's but got... If there is <laughs> so anything this... like that, that would be very useful. So, he's got almond milk, which is one of his morsels. Target must make its con saving throw. On a failed save, they will fall unconscious in one minute and remain unconscious for ten minutes. Very cool. So it's very cool. he would he would offer that. Uh, so not not Porsche's original intention, no. but maybe something she can use um, to 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 get um, what's his face drowsy, perhaps. She definitely yeah. she wants it. It's not that she doesn't want it, but it's all about. I mean, mechanically, it doesn't need to be a morsel. If there was just food that Pushkin would recommend for a uh, uh, a well full stomach that can soak up alcohol, um, I'd gladly give that as uh, performing the same mechanical role. Uh, he would just tell us stuff that can line your stomach for free, but he would offer that if um, 
and she owes him a favor at some point in the future. Yeah, I think if that if she does if he does that because she's like she you'd see her kind of react like oh I don't know that feels a bit like cheating you know um fine I'll I'll, I'll take it as a precautionary backup in case he gets um too much of a lead on me. Um hey can can I see Porsche's list of people? Uh, you were all present when you chose your different people, so yeah, I will change people's lists to be viewable to everybody. And I will put Porsche's front and center. Okay, I've just got in my notes. Crowleyan is a racist cunt. <laughs> oh, my internet died. Great. Oh yeah, it definitely has died. Come on, computer. It's not like the best thing, but you can imagine if you ate it slowly, it might yeah. lie in your stomach. Sounds perfect to me. Sorry, my internet died halfway through, so I didn't get any of that. Oh no! Uh, Pushkin is um, offering um, uh, Porsche uh, his his morsels, sorting um, her out like for this stuff now, but also for the rest of the journey. Mm. Um, food as she needs and potentially even once you reach uh, the aisle but in exchange for tick oof coming from uh, Porsche's uh, list of uh, people to uh, Pushkins oh um she'd insist then as like an extra thing like saying I'm happy for you to take tick oof but I'd like you to take tick hab with them as well I don't want to separate uh a family unit like that. Oh yeah, Pushkin would be more than happy. Yeah, that's fine then. She'd so, be like, sounds more than fair then. Takes a load off my mind. Yeah, she'd give, he would give her, um, her the almond milk for the spiking and the hardened bread to help um, line her stomach. And also a load of other sh like food as well from the stores. So that, what does the hardened bread do, Tom? I mean, the hardened bread is meant to hurt you, but... I it has its like own hard. stuff, but I think it sounds like the perfect like stomach lining stuff, so that'll be your advantage on con save for cool. drunkenness. And the arm will put someone to sleep. Yep. Yeah, I think the con save would be... Uh, God, what is it for Pushkin? Awesome. That's exactly what I wanted, so... I love it. I love one it. All the hunter gatherers. <laughs> yeah, very cool. I want, a, just... I, want, I want a monopoly on the food market. <laughs> I'm just updating it now. That's updated for you, Kieran. I'll just remove those two bushes. Sleep. This game would be like, ah, so I'm looking for. I I'm not into hard drinking, but I will watch to see how well my Ingredients go down. Good to hear it. Well, I'll be glad to see you there. It's this evening. We meet. Uh, it, she probably like designate like a general meeting place where people. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 And she he would also be like, "Here, take a little bit of rabbit and uh, apple sauce with you. Just <laughs> a freebie." <laughs> she takes it and kind of dips her little finger in it and licks it, and it's just like, "Oh, Pushkin." Quite delicious. Yeah, it's rather rich, isn't it? <laughs> Good really luck nice. in your little competition, Portia. Thank you, Pushkin. Have a 
a productive day. Look round to his cook and be like, you say nothing of this girl. <laughs> yeah, Saria, who's just been there working away the whole time, is just like, yes, chef. <clears throat> Amazing. God, I love these characters. Um, right, last thing before we stop for this evening. Can I have uh, anybody roll a d10 for me, please? I'll take whichever rolls first. Ten. Oh, shit. Ten. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> there is, and this is for everyone, there's a bit of a commotion uh, up on the main deck. Um, whether your characters attend to it is up to you. But anybody who does sees a number of uh, the crew and even some of the sailors have been distracted from uh, their tasks pointing out and and uh, shouting, uh, looking out um, in the ship's path. You see um, maybe three, four hundred feet away uh, from the front of the ship now, um, the sorry remnants of what can only be a destroyed ship um, floating up ahead of you. Um, in amongst the wreckage, there looks to be maybe a half dozen people clearly waving... Um, and looking to gain the attention of the large uh, quiver sail. Um, and they don't look to be in the best shape. Um, Lord Ernst is nowhere to be seen. Um, anyone close to him, Pushkin, uh, the Burgomaster, would know uh, that uh, Lord Ernst is um, predisposed uh, in the mornings um, to uh, dictate his memoirs um, to... Uh, uh, um, his personal scribe, Elsie Winchern, um, and as such is currently in his chambers doing so. You think probably with this commotion, with some of the sailors drawn over and with the immediate um, um, event in front uh, requ requiring uh, attention, you think probably someone here needs to take charge. But with those thoughts... As Anya's hand goes straight up. Uh, with those thoughts, um, I will draw this first uh, session to a close. Mm.